Uh-huh. Come on, get the jazz hands going. Put on your big girl panties, and I hope it's the waterproof ones. <laughs> We've got Patrick R. from TV, TV, The Truth About Guns. I uh, know, still not that. Why, why am I saying truth about guns? The firearm wrong. blog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I bad. did it again. I did it again to him. I don't know. Did, listen, somebody's going to have to change their name, Patrick. Uh, no, nah, I mean, I- someone's going to have to change their name because that's just easier. Oh, we just we just lost him. So, OK, oh, he's man. from the firearm blog. He's from the, the firearm blog. I'm going to yes. write that like on my forehead right here so we can Can't remember right it. Here. Yeah, so we've got Patrick. He's uh, sorting out some issues, some things he's got going on over there. We also have Walter Keller. Last and, second. Yes, you know, and we are live from the Big Daddy Gun Studios, of course. Let me not forget that in Gainesville, Florida. So we're going to be talking about, uh, you know, gun news since we have a gun news guy here. Oh, man, I'm and, me, today. If you, you want to call me that. Yeah, and we'll be talking about some other stuff like, uh, you know, YouTube basically declaring war on freedom. That's what I'm calling it. No. Because they just went and like demonetized Again? every single one of these hangouts that I've done. And Are you this, serious? Oh, no. Yeah, this is number 47, and they've demonetized all their asses, except for the ones that they demonetized before and we complained about. So they remonetized, but every other one. So it's like about 40. <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> Yeah, so you know, but that this is a thing that YouTube is doing right now to just make it difficult for us. So, yeah. you know, that's how, that's how the whole thing goes. So, especially you know, usually I thank everyone on that supports us on Patreon in the end, and I will do that. But I want to thank all those people, especially on a day like today. We cannot do without those people. I want to say what's up to everyone that's like hanging out in the chat. I know you guys are waiting for a while. You know, Patrick is on some kind of coast. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm in the in the middle in, in the Texas. Oh, he's in the middle oh. somewhere. So, but I think yeah. he, you know, he had to work, and we don't, you know, we want to make sure that we don't, you know, he's already been fired from Brownells and places like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. No, we don't, you know, <laughs> we had to wait to get him set up here. So, uh, thanks for everyone for waiting, hanging out, and all that kind of good stuff. Hit, hit us up with your questions. Let us know what you want to ask Patrick about. You know, if you've got questions for Patrick or Walter, things in the news that you guys want to talk about. There's a lot of stuff going on right now. So, I will just start with Patrick. And, uh, you know, what's your what's your background here, Patrick, in firearms, and how did you get started with TFB TV? Um, so uh, kind of just an enthusiast. Okay, it's not working, is it? What's what's not working? Your, oh, your your lower third. You still not getting that? Up. No, I've, I've, I've uploaded it like six times. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Sometimes you you like it happens. I don't know. My my mic keeps keeps cutting in and out. I know it is. Mm-hmm. So, this problem immediately. That's okay. This is what happens when you do live broadcasts. How often do, do you guys do these live broadcasts at TFB TV? I've done it once, one time, okay. um, and it is really kind of a, a it, it's tough. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. So, I was I was sitting in the kitchen when Lola asked me if I wanted to be on, so here I am. Boom. <laughs> oh. All right. Yeah. So you guys. So, well, you know, that's how it goes, Walter. You know. I'm a pro, I guess, right? Yeah, you're all pro at this. Anything anyone's saying. Yeah. A demonetized oh, pro. Oh, that's, that's <laughs> Patrick, that you can't hear us? <laughs> now he can. I don't know if he can hear us. Oh, my God. You might, you may have to have, okay. Uh, let me, uh, let me, go ahead, Walter, and talk for a second here. Let me uh, tell la, 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 la. him. Uh, he might have to. Here we are again. Hey, look at my best friend here I just picked up. Oh, man. Um, I, just, I just heard things. Hmm. So yeah, hey, so yeah. <laughs> we'll get we'll we'll get these technical difficulties yeah. worked out. That's why a, we were taking a little bit. So what's going on with you, Walter? I got a new toy today. What's this? It's an RPG two. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to drop out and come back. This is insanely yeah. messed up. Yeah. So yeah, he's gonna he's gonna probably have to. So RPG two, where'd you get that from? Uh, actually, I bought it from Centerfire Systems. Oh, okay. So it came yeah. in. So this is brand new then. Yeah, I just got it today. Yeah, it's been demilitarized, as they do. Okay. They, they put holes and stuff in the sides, but they had them on sale, and they're really cheap compared to what they've been in the past. Oh, sweet. So I pulled okay. the trigger on. Them. 
Can you can you fill in that hole or remilitarize it? I guess not. I'm guessing not. Not really. <laughs> not technically. <laughs> not technically. I am looking for an inert, meaning a dummy round for one. If anybody has an RPG two round sitting around. Oh, okay. Uh, they are they are out there. Okay. Yeah. That's cool, man. That's cool. Can yeah. can we ask you how much it was, or if we have to ask you, we can't afford it? No, 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 no. Actually, when I say it's cheap. It was $149, right? Oh, cool. I want two. I want to do a wheel. Well, I should have bought course. three or four because I probably could. I think Centerfire sold out of them real quick. So. Oh, man. I know. I know. Yeah. I, know. Well, I would have just put those like a cross, you know, crossbones. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. There you go. Yeah. It's a, actually, yeah. it's an excellent prop. Yeah. Okay. So. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Sad. We've, you know. So, how, what, what else have you been up to? I know, obviously, I don't know if you saw in the news. Some oh. dude in Barcelona yeah, yeah, yeah. used a vehicle. It looks like a van as a terrorist weapon of and mass guess, destruction. And guess what? He ain't a Baptist. <laughs> um, yeah, he wasn't a he wasn't a Nazi <laughs> Nazi skinhead. No, whatever, no Nazi skinhead. Right, no, dude. No, no, no. So you know, he, he um, was one of the typical uh, the typical suspects, so to speak. Right. Um, but you know, either way, I think that I think that that alt right guy that did that thing is also a terrorist. I think we should, you know, well, press terrorist yeah, that, charges against that dude. Yeah. You know, you may have the right to protest. You don't have the right to hurt or try to destroy right. or kill people. Right. Right. Exactly. So, yeah. You know, well, um, yes. and the, the world we're living in, it's like everything that people can use as weapons, they're going to use as weapons. Sure. Right. Yeah. You don't. You know. You don't need a firearm to kill people. Obviously. No. No. Anything that people can use as weapons, they're going to use. And a good example of that is there's a um, there's an article. Let me see. This is this is on the truth about guns. No I gotta one, go there. Yeah. No, no one tell, no one tell Patrick about this. Okay. This is actually on the truth about guns. So, um, <laughs> and it's called weaponize the. It says weaponize fame and other reasons to keep and bear arms. So sure. apparently Jennifer Lawrence, who has 16 million fans on Facebook, yeah, she told a- her fans to go look at the crowds of the of those alt right guys that were protesting. Uh-huh. And then identify them and all that kind of stuff. Right. And you know, the thing about that is that's also a form of terrorism. I'm not. I don't like those guys. I don't agree with. Well, there, you know, you know something. Hang on. You know how the left is always. Oh, you're such a bully. You're such a bully. Everybody's a bully until they become a bully. Then it's just. Oh well, we're just doing what we should be doing. You know. We're, yeah. We're setting well, because, the world free. Because that's how. You know, that's how the world is, right? If you're going to fight a guy and you've oh. got a gun, you want him to have a knife. Well, you know, you know that's just how that's just how the world is. Or you want him to be disarmed. If you're going to fight him, you want to win. So th- these are the kind of things that they do. I don't agree with those guys who are out there protesting. Um, neither, you know, the, neither not, the side. Neither yeah, side. I, and and I definitely don't agree with the uh, neo-Nazi skinhead dudes. But they did have the right to be out there protesting you know peacefully, peacefully. Not, I mean, they, right, those right, guys right. went oh, yeah. there and they were not protesting peacefully. They weren't not, beating up people. They were. No, I'm not defending them a bit. Normally, when they do their thing, they come out, they say their piece, they walk, and usually they go away. If you attack them, it's another story, but yeah. normally they do. And that's, once again, I'm not trying to defend it or anything they're saying or anything like that. Yeah. But, um, but And one thing to, one thing that we all have to keep in mind is that these people weren't re- – you know, you see lots of people that protest and they're hiding who they are. These guys weren't hiding who they are. Well, yeah, hello, hello. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so but, why do you have to wear a black hood? Yeah, well, these guys were not hiding who they are. Isn't that a lot like the so, Klan? Yeah, I, I agree with you on that. Okay, okay, Patrick's here. So the thing I think the, the the thing I think about that is that you know they're identifying themselves, and you know what? If people don't like me, I would like them to identify themselves. We're yeah. living in a world where a lot of people anonymously don't like people and do things and attack them. If right, they don't, right. if yeah, they don't yeah. like this group or that group or whatever, and they put themselves out there, there's nothing wrong with that. But you know, there is something wrong when you have people who are famous that use that fame and and yeah, start right, going right. after right. people. Right. And, right. Last night, Jimmy Kimmel had a big spiel about, you know, everything. And I was just like, well, hello, what about the other side? No, those hello. guys don't care. They don't care about the other yeah. side. It doesn't, I, don't, it, I don't even watch all that stuff, to be well, honest. I don't either. I won't, definitely won't watch him anymore. That's for sure. Because, you know, do your acting thing, per, perform, be pretty. Jennifer Lawrence, round, round, round. But now, you know, I won't. I won't. She gets in the list with some of the other ones. I don't, she could can, she can take her clothes off and run naked to the neighborhood. I don't care. So, yeah. ultimately, oh, I, I care. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, come on. But 
they it's just, not, it's not, there's nothing special there. How about there, that other know. one? The other, um, I hey, guess hey, that. Hey, what? Can you, can, I, can you kindly, is there a way to fix the title of the, uh, oh, no, it's fixed. What title? <laughs> uh, the title of the, um, what you call it? My, I just, my boss just texted me and said, you're working with uh, T-Tag now? Oh. Oh, Lola must have fixed it. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> Listen, <laughs> this is going to keep happening. This is going to keep happening. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to do about it, man. First of all, you, you know, I mean, I, I'm, what, oh, you're showing me evidence? <laughs> yeah, yeah. See? <laughs> you know what? Let, okay. So, let, let, first of all, Patrick, you know what? Uh, I mean, I do apologize for that, but I'm going to laugh first because you guys have gotten me a couple of times. So, you know, um, you know, I don't I, I do feel bad, kind of, oh, open but carry. I don't like. But, you know, I should. I There has to be something that we could do. <laughs> open I mean, fix this. I, if, what do you want for me? What do you. OK, I, now I lost my phone. <laughs> I, lost, I totally lost my phone now because I put the wrong title in this thing. So. But listen, take comfort in the okay. fact, Patrick, that you totally clickbaited me on that video where you got fired. <laughs> oh, he fell, but he fell for it so hard it was yeah, dead. Felt, and you know why? Let me <laughs> let me know. let me tell you how this happened because I saw I clicked over there to check the news to the truth about guns, right? And um, um. You know, now hold on a second. No, I tr it the firearm blog. <laughs> so <laughs> I clicked over there to check the news, and what happened was I saw that the that the, it just said Patrick R gets fired, but there were so many people looking at the video I could not look at the video, and then we were going live. So I'm like, what the hell's going on? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, you got me. So. Oh, you know, yeah, but, well. hey, we'll work it out. We'll, we'll eventually, maybe like a couple of years from now, I will get this figured out. I'm hoping sooner rather than later because <laughs> uh, I, I just, again, got a screenshot of the podcast. Yeah. Can we can we just make you just work for both of these things? Can we do that or no? No, that's, no, no, you, no that's Probably contractually, we can't do that, right? <laughs> I, I, mean, I just don't want to. Oh, okay. What about when you're, what about when you do stuff that people don't like? Like I see, you know, you're the guy who was banging on the uh, P320. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, we got to talk about that tonight, right? Well, yeah, no, that's fine. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, like how many blows does it take to get to the center of a P320? <laughs> uh, if you hit it at the right angle, one. One? <laughs> yeah, pretty yeah. sure. Yeah. Boom. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, absolutely. It only takes one um, if you hit it at the right angle with the right amount of force. And uh, now, like a lot of people were dogging me for the test and saying it's a non-scientific test, and that's not true. It's actually used by pistol manufacturers, testing agencies, even like state and low, uh, federal governments to mm -hmm. test a uh, firearm for like drop resistance. And the idea is, is the hammer test. So they call it the mallet test. It's a less invasive, less destructive means of testing it for drop safety. So uh, traditionally, it's done with a 10 to 15 pound uh, rubber or leather mallet. Um, I use the gunsmith hammer because that's what I had on hand. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, it, like I, I really enjoy the fact that there are people out there, um, you know, like criticizing it when there's documented like evidence that this is a legitimate method of testing. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, I, I want to unpack all those things. But first of all, before before you like uh, had to drop out and come back in, we were talking about how you got started with with um, mm -hmm. you know with TFB TV. So yeah. you're, you're you were saying that you're just an enthusiast, right? So you never did like the yeah, military. Yeah, yeah. Um, actually, yeah, I'm, I'm ex military, and uh, okay. I was good friends with Alex C. Uh, prior to him getting involved with the firearm blog uh, as a writer, and then. Um, maybe late 2014, he said, hey, man, like, I think that we want to start a YouTube channel. Do you want to give it a shot? I was like, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. And he's a good so, uh, he's a good guy, man. Love that guy. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, we filmed several for a while. Then my day job got to be a little bit hectic. I switched companies and 
uh, just didn't have the time to do the boat to uh, TFB TV and dropped out for a while. And then Alex had uh, some changes in his life and I had some changes in mine. So I kind of came back. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess it was November of last year. Right. And you guys have been doing a phenomenal job because what? The TFB TV has been up how long? Like a year and a half? Um, yeah. Two years maybe? Um, it, the first episodes were January of 2015. Okay. Yeah, there you go. And you guys are like kicking asses. I mean, I think you're uh, – let me see here. I will check. 341,000. Yeah, there you go, man. I mean, like 341, that's awesome. You don't even have your name, your YouTube name verified. <laughs> but yeah. you, but you got like no, you no, know. We do, we do, we do. We, uh, yeah, we do. Um, for whatever reason, it doesn't show up as verified. Oh, like, it doesn't. Oh, okay. You, you, you can go. I don't remember what the heck it was. Um, t -t 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 -t. Yeah, because if oh. you go, I and I want to encourage people to go to your YouTube channel and subscribe to that. Let's get it up to like three fifty and above that. You know. Let's see here. Uh, I'm going to start responding to some of these guys in the chat because that yeah. sounds like fun. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We'll, we will get to the guys that, yeah, there's a, there's a bunch of stuff going on in the chat. We'll get to, we'll go through it. I think Lola's yeah. going through that right now. <laughs> so yeah, there is some craziness going on in there. So feel free, feel free to uh, yeah, talk to um, those guys, you know? No, man, I wanted, I saw some of the greens um, message. So did, did I see uh, Yankee Marshall's video? Yeah, I did, and that's kind of why I wanted to detail about um, the actual uh, testing protocol for the mallet test, and it is a scientific test. You do hold it in mm -hmm. your hand and hit it with a hammer. That is literally the test. If you go back to our video, I pinned a comment with the uh, the details of that test. So what did, uh, what did uh, Yankee Marshall say about you in his video? Uh, I tried to explain physics in the most elementary way possible and claimed that if it wasn't placed into a vice and then struck, then my test was invalid. Now, I made some incorrect uh, conclusions based on what I saw during the test. And you have to keep in mind, I did the test at uh, 11 a.m. There are 11, uh, 11 p.m. Mm -hmm. um, I, I take that back. I'm sorry. I did it right about the time my wife was coming home from work, and I was in the garage hitting guns with hammers when she opened the garage. <laughs> right. um, and uh, <laughs> so I, we finally decided to go and put a video together at about 1 a.m., and by the time that video was filmed, um, I was filming at 5 a.m. Um, I had to be on a flight at 7 a.m., so <laughs> I yep. didn't really spend a whole lot of time um, – you know, analyzing the results, but I did make yeah. some incorrect conclusions in there. Um, but yeah, that, that is what it is. Yeah. I mean, uh, are you like, you know, are you sorry you put up the video? Cause it's over 150,000 views. <laughs> no, I, I mean, so. I, I could be wrong all day long. I state in the video yeah. that I'm not a pistol engineer and like, I've got no idea what the hell's going on inside there. There's some sort of witchcraft and magic that happens to make, you know, a safe gun safe and a not safe gun, not safe. Um, and like it's just it is what it is like yeah i'm not an engineer i don't have an engineering degree i don't understand how to put these things together i've got friends that are engineers but they can only explain so much to me without like stepping over that line of um divulging too much information that could possibly be damaging to their co uh, the company they work for yeah you know what the thing is i think that people obviously have the right to complain about stuff that we do in videos but we also have the right to do whatever we want to do in a video <laughs> You know, yeah. if, if you if you don't like it, don't watch it. And you know. Mr. Mr. Subgun said Glock liked it. Yeah, I'm sure. You know. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now, did you do that to a Glock? Yeah, yeah, I did. Um, you you actually, did the I same did thing to a Glock. Yeah, I did it to a Glock. I did it to an FN 509, both with and without an Apex trigger. I did it to a uh, Smith and Wesson shield with an Apex trigger in it. Uh, there was a couple of other ones that I did it to, I can't recall offhand, uh, but the only one that I did experience a failure with, uh, oh, I'm sorry, there were two that I exper experienced the same failure with, and that was the uh, P320 from Six Hour, and then the Honor Guard, Honor, or the Honor Defense Honor Guard also experienced the same failure, um, and that's because of the Honor Defense Honor Guard, that's so hard to say. <laughs> yeah, that's um, not confusing. <laughs> That, that gun is actually just a single stack P320, uh, essentially, when you boil it down to its purest form. Okay. 
Okay, I understand. So, you know what, let me take a quick second here. Everything being a little bit jumbled up, I didn't remind people. I want to remind everyone to hit the like button on this video, subscribe to the channel, and of course, share that we're doing this and that we have Patrick R. from TFB TV, fire our blog. Oh, yeah, you got it right. Holy crap. Yeah. So Lola has it written down. Over, oh, and she's got it written down over there for me. So share this so that other people can get into it if they want to bring the hate or they want to bring the love or ask questions or whatever. You know, I remind you guys to do that. Make sure you hit the like button. Definitely share. So now, so yes, yeah, so you did it to all the guns. Listen, you know, I mean, this is probably the thing that you get into whenever something goes wrong. Or whenever there's a thing like this, like what happened with the P320. And I know one of the things that happened is that the rumors and everything were out there because you came on kind of like at the last minute to talk to us about that, right? Yeah. I think that was yeah, on like a Friday was, before the news really broke to everyone else. I think I think it was you breaking. sent me the text about it, uh, that you were going to be doing something live and asked me a question. And I was like, yeah, dude, just send me a link. And I, I, I called in from my phone. Um, I think that's how it played out. Yeah, yeah, and we also yeah. had um, we also had uh, Tim Military Arms Channel. Yep. And um, and I asked both of you guys the same thing because I said, did any of you guys drop test it? He didn't. You didn't. So you know, I don't think it's far stretched for you to say, hey, you know, I didn't do these tests. Let me see if I can do something here, and then do it in what's at least to you a safe way of going about it. Yeah, um, no, and that's what I did. Um, I actually broke out my own P320 and uh, drop tested the crap out of it. So much so, I had to buy a new frame. Right. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, which is one of the cool things about the P320 that you can buy a new frame. Um. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, it certainly is. Uh, I think I took the old one out of here, but uh, it broke so badly that I decided to melt it with a soldering iron and turn it into like a P320 classic looking thing. <laughs> okay. It, it looks awful. Um, oh, really? Okay. Yeah, no, but um, yeah, I mean, these are my personal guns that I was drop testing and hitting with hammers. They weren't like loners or specially prepared guns. Like this is the P320 that I've been carrying for um, like a year. Uh, well, I mean, longer than that, really, I think. Yeah. But, uh, you know, like if you look at the slide, there are definite uh, problems with it now. It's not as pretty as it once was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But. You know, I listen, I think it's a totally valid thing for you to do that test. It, it wasn't scientific. I don't think anyone looking at that would think it's scientific. At the same time, you know what, um, Yankee Marshall or anyone else out there, this, you know, that wants to hate, that's the, you know, that's unfortunately or fortunately, however people want to look at it, this is how it is, you know. Well, you know, I mean, it's his right to be wrong. Um, I've got no issue with him being yeah. incorrect about something. But I'm sure um, he helped you out to get a, f a few extra views, right? I, you know, I don't really think yeah. that many. Um, I think that it was uh, all on our own on, yeah, on that. It, it was all based on um, your awesomeness. That's good. I yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. You know, can't argue that. You know, no, um, a lot of his viewers are viewers on mine and. Um, yeah, on our channel. So, like, I don't feel like it really, like, built up some hate parade. And if you look at his videos and what a good one does. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Sorry, I'm reading the chat. <laughs> oh, okay. So do you want to, do you want to jump in here and get to some stuff from the, um, t from the chat? See any questions in there you feel like tackling? Yeah. Yeah, let's see here. Um, so, Green, any video on the 509 with the Apex coming? Um, no. I, I'm not going to be doing a video on it. I will be doing a written review, and um, I actually have it here, so I can answer any questions you might have um, You know, for the 509 and the Apex trigger. Uh, let's see here. And do I think a DASA gun can have the same failure when in single action? Yeah, I do. Uh, if it's a trigger that has enough weight behind it and it's a light enough single action, absolutely, it's entirely possible. Um, but it's not really the same kind of failure because we were overcoming several different safeties. So on the 320, um, when you depress the trigger an eighth of an inch, that's actually disengaging the striker block. And uh, 
that's like the biggest failure. Now, I get it. If you disable the striker block and you get a striker drop whenever you, the trigger moves to the rear, like that's normal operation. But when you drop it and it's disengaging that uh, striker block, that's where the problem's at. Mm -hmm. And uh, you haven't gotten any of the fix stuff in yet, right? I don't know if they've even no, sent any no, out. Actually, uh, yeah, I just registered my 324, the fix, so we'll see how that turns out. Um, yeah, there's a bunch of other things. Now, you know what? I was talking on the top of this. You probably missed it, but, you know, YouTube is doing this thing where they're demonetizing all our videos, and, you know, they've, they've like, been rolling out lots of different strategies to marginalize us and all that. Have you guys been facing any of that stuff? I think we all are. You know, we're all seeing lower revenue than uh, we were previously. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you know, it's kind of an issue that we're going to have to learn how to get around and, um, you know, work around the issue instead of just kind of giving in. And pa our Patreon supporters have been really amazing about that. Um, you know, and we've been lucky enough to sign up some sponsors as well. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you on that. There's no way, you know, if if we, um, I don't think there's really that much that we can do at this point to fight it. Uh, at least not unless they, um, things like YouTube and Facebook and all that become get declared like utilities. You know, which I don't know, I don't know if I necessarily want to do that. Lots The way that lots of us think, we don't really necessarily care for that. You know, we don't care for laws have laws having to be put into effect and all that kind of thing. But um, you know, sometimes these things are like double-edged swords, right? You know, people will use yeah. it to chop you up, and then you will also, you know, do your own self in. But we have to find ways, and I think there isn't there isn't a platform for people who think like us, not just gun guys, but lots of people who are independent thinkers. There's really not any kind of uh, one standard platform that we could go to where we wouldn't have these problems. Not yet. Uh, maybe people are out there trying to develop that kind of stuff. I don't know. I, the problem with the, the stuff that's emerging, because I hear a lot of people say, why don't you head on over to vid.me or why don't you you know, upload over at full 30 or whatever the case might be. And like, I've talked to a lot of creators about those services and unfortunately they don't even pay out enough to cover gas to the range for a lot of those guys. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm, I'm doing some work while we're talking here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, that is one thing. Have you, did you guys, do you guys have a, a channel on full 30? No, no. no. Um, yeah. Like I, I talked to Jeff, uh, you know, Teo Flittermouse, Jeff, mm -hmm. at length about that, and um, you know, he said that it's just not even worth it. Like, it, it, because of how the site is structured and how things work, it doesn't really pay out to upload over there, and it it, it, it like takes traffic away from YouTube, and like, it just doesn't make sense. Uh, I mean, yeah. For him, I don't think it makes sense for us either. Um, the only way that the only thing that would make sense for us, I think, might be like a native uh, video player on TFB, and you know, also do YouTube. Yeah, I think ultimately we're all going to have to do YouTube because that's the big platform that exists. And as long as they're not shutting us out completely, at some point they are going to do that. I think a lot of what they're waiting for is politics to go exactly their way, because I think if they went out there and just said, "Yeah, we're just going to completely shut off all of these channels." Then you get into like a freedom of speech type of situation. Maybe it winds up going to the Supreme Court. Maybe they get declared utilities. It's a private. It's a private business. Um, yeah, um, I, I won't argue that. But there are things that have already happened in that vein. You know, right? CBS and NBC and ABC can tell you to piss up a pole if you want to do your gun advertising. So what's stopping YouTube from doing the same thing? Yeah, but should they be able to? Should should places like that be able to tell us <laughs> well, that we can't advertise when we're doing something that's do you illegal? Think you should, do you have to bake the cake? I know. This is the, well, this that's, is the question, that's the right? Same, that's the same thing. Why one, yeah. one, one, not the other? You know? So, I mean, I don't know what to tell you. It's it's They, they don't want to look. There's, a, there's lots of people that get on YouTube and watch gun videos. I mean, if they take that away, they're going to go somewhere else. There'll be another one that'll pop up. Just like they're gonna, just like there's people working on a new Fox News channel right now, because Foxes went the way that 
a lot of people don't like. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think what we have right now is like what Patrick is saying. We can use you know YouTube is almost use like, like a, a server. Use them, use them like a Trojan. Well, as it's long a as server you, for our videos, and you use them as long as you can. Yeah, absolutely. That's why I look at Facebook. Facebook won't take my advertising, but I'm going to do stuff on Facebook as long as I possibly can. Right. Absolutely. You know, until yeah. they kick me off. When they kick yeah. me off, then it's their loss. Right. So. Right, so I'm seeing some comments pop up in the chat that I uh, wanted to talk about. Uh, somebody asked what I'm working on. Um, yeah, what the <laughs> hell are you working on? Dude? He's building a battleship. Yeah, yeah. I guess. You yeah, know. Um, I, I, I had the uh, scope that I'm putting back into the mount. What scope is that? I mean, if you're yeah. going to be like fixing up your scope and stuff like that, you might as well, you know. Show well, it to know, us. I, Tell I, us I, what I, you're working on. Well, yeah. some people oh, people oh. were asking about the uh, 223 AK. Oh, is that what you Somebody, got there? Yeah, I happen to have an 84S. So, oh, okay. That's pretty rad. Yeah. 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 So, uh, um, that's cool. Well, yeah, somebody asked what scope it was, and Hank, you did too. I've got a uh, Vortex Razor HD Gen 2 in the, uh, what is it, uh, 4 and a half to 27. Um, Sitting in a spur mount. Yeah, hold hold no. it still for a second if you can. There you, there you go. Very cool. Yeah. So this is going to be going on a rifle build um, for, uh, what is it, um, Alamo Precision Rifles. Okay. Out of Texas. Uh, the, the guy, that the machinist that builds all the rifles is my neighbor, literally. And uh, we didn't know it. We didn't know we were both in the industry until uh, we ran into each other at an event in uh, Phoenix. <laughs> oh, okay, that's cool. <laughs> that's weird, right? Yeah, you guys live like in the same neighborhood, but you probably, you know, you know we, we don't get. Fence line. Oh, you share a fence line, and you didn't know? Yeah. Yeah, because you know it's one of those things like you don't necessarily talk to everyone about it, you know. Right. Yeah. 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 No. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, you don't talk to anybody about it. You know, I, yeah. I load up my targets every now and then, and yeah. I roll out, and nobody really knows what I do. Yeah. What is that? I mean, one of the things you don't talk about your neighbors is your RPG too. Yeah, there you go. Right on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Some people just don't understand. I don't know what it is. Yeah. I can't. I can't figure it out. Yeah, I'll talk. I'll talk to anyone that wants to talk to me about guns. I don't hide it, but I don't throw it in people's face. Face no, either. No, no, no. Yeah, I mean, I got into a thing with someone in a in the barbershop shop uh, yesterday when I was getting my hair cut. Uh oh. But you know, I mean, that's just because the guy was talking nonsense. He was he was trying to tell me that um, that he thinks Trump wanted this guy, like actually incited this guy to go and and kill oh, people. Come on. That, and I was like, yeah, dude, you know, you don't have to, you don't have to like him, but to say that he actually that, incited. That is, that's like yeah. saying George Bush flew the planes into the World Trade Center. Well, Give you know, he was, he was trying to tell me that he was trying to a bunch of horse shit. I swear. Well, yeah, he and he was trying to tell me that he could see that, but see, that's not like what we were talking about, Jennifer Lawrence, when she's saying, "Hey, out these guys," because if someone outs them and then someone goes and like kills one of those guys, then can we say that she incited those people? Well, I mean, maybe we could, but ultimately, I think people kill people. You know, that's, so. no, but you know what? We were talking about that the other night about people. You know, these there, there's another some other black legislator somewhere saying that somebody should assassinate Trump or he needs to die or something like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's just words, right? But there's a lot of weak-minded people out there that go, "Wow, she's right. Let's do it." So, is she guilty? Yeah, I see. I don't know. I mean, that's the you that's know. the thing. But and and we definitely should she be I thrown out. I mean, that's not very responsible. You know, you're supposed to be leading people in the right direction, not yeah. tell them to go kill people. It's you know, come on. Yeah, but also unless I see something where Trump tweeted, I'm not saying it's impossible because he's doing a lot of crazy ass tweets or whatever. <laughs> but unless he unless I see something where he tweets and he says someone should just go get in their car and run over um, these come BLM on. people it, or Antifa it, 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 or whatever, it's, then it's, so silly. You know. it's pathetic. Come on, you know it's, it's yeah, not even worth so. reporting. If, it, if in the old days before the internet, it wouldn't be reported because yeah. it wasn't. You know everything. Ha but the news cycle happens so fast now. Constantly, everybody's running their mouth, and you know, a week from now, you won't know anything about Charlottesville. What's Charlottesville? 
Yeah. So now let's, this is probably a good time, Patrick, to talk to you about this. So now what's the policy over at uh, the Firearm Blog? Uh, do you guys talk about politics? I know. Uh, no, right? I'm sitting here quietly. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. So, because the boss is, wa is the boss watching? Is the boss really watching? I have no idea. Oh, I don't know. okay. Okay. Who is the boss? Nope, nope. Who is the, the boss? boss? Can you discuss Steve. the boss? <laughs> uh, is a mysterious man named Steve. Uh, Steve. Okay. So, what what kind of guy is Steve? Oh, yeah. Steve's awesome. How is it working? Really <laughs> that was a that's a loaded question. It's <laughs> <laughs> like to ask him my my employees. Hey, that Walter. Oh, Walter's well, great. Yeah, he's a good guy. <laughs> well, now, truth be told, if you look at the firearm blog, it says TFB, like the firearm blog. Then it says firearms, not politics, and that and that is a thing, right? It's always been like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I don't touch politics. And, and, I mean, it, it, between you and me, I, I've got no interest in them at all. Mm -hmm. um, I pay attention to them about every four years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I understand yeah. that. I understand that. You know, I, I and, and that's probably not a bad strategy. Or, well, yeah. I'm not going to say. It's it's, a, it's a probably a strategy and a policy, but it's a good policy to, to have, I think, at TFB. And there's other people out there that can Yeah, because a lot of people are easily offended. So, you know, I, I, I read it. It's every, got nothing every, to do with that, man. It's got nothing to do with uh, people being offended. It has everything to do with we're gun guys. Like, we want to be able to talk to gun guys that believe in liberal policies. We want to be able to talk to gun guys that believe in uh, right-wing policies. It, 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 like, I don't care what you believe in as in terms of politics. Like, I just want to be able to share a hobby with you. That's it. Yeah. That's all so, it is. So probably what's important is do you believe in the Second Amendment? I mean, sure, sure. I mean, obviously. Yeah. So you so you guys discuss Second Amendment stuff, I'm taking. No, no, That's, no, no, no. No, you no, don't discuss no, that no, stuff so either, we, right? We yeah, no, we don't. Um, so the, me personally, yes, I do believe in the Second Amendment. Obviously, I do. I, you know, mm -hmm. I served in the military uh, to defend uh, the Constitution. But uh, at TFB, we focus on the firearms themselves. Now, sometimes okay. there are some policy things that seep into um, our news. And the reason for that is sometimes it's completely unavoidable that a policy decision somewhere affects, um, you know, something going on in the firearms industry. But uh, by and large, if I could not talk about politics ever, um, I'd be a happy man. Like, I don't even watch the news. I don't talk about politics with my family. Um, it's just not something that I in, enjoy. Okay, so I guess I gotta delete all these political questions. <laughs> Let me start. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, so um, I'm gonna go into some other stuff. So I mean, and and um, did you go to school for writing, or is this just a thing no. you picked up? No, uh, just something I picked up. Okay, so uh, a surprise that I was good at it. Uh, well, a surprise I was passable at it, I should say. Right. So now, do you guys have any kind of focus or agenda when you, you know, when you come up with the articles and things that you're going to cover or write about? No, man. Um, it's just really like, what do we think a gun guy would appreciate? Like, what does somebody who is a firearms enthusiast care about? Mm -hmm. So, like, for example, how did you guys wind up on the subject of the P320? Uh, I got a tip about... DPD pulling them, um, and then you know, as soon as something went wrong, I got another tip uh, from another party that told me that it had failed the drop test that Omaha Outdoors had performed. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, like at that point, it becomes a safety issue. Like, if it's a safety issue, sure, yeah, like I'm gonna, we're, we're gonna, we're gonna cover, we're gonna talk about it. Right. Um, but if it's like a politics issue, I would just as soon not discuss it. Right. So what did you feel about the 320 before all of this came down? Like, um, you know, what was your take on it? So my take on the 320 is it probably, it, it's a $250 handgun. Um, the reason that it is $500 in the stores is it has a six hour name on it. And that's my personal opinion. And that's not the opinion of anyone else. Yeah, I, want to, I, want to, I want to specify that because that, that goes along with lots of guns out there. Um, yeah. No, 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 no. Like that, that one straight up is a, like a two hundred and fifty dollar gun. Um, like I, I want to say it probably costs. It, my, I don't know for sure what they what it costs them to manufacture. Mm -hmm. I, I think under under two hundred bucks. Okay. 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 Yeah. You know. Um, 
have you ever tried the P250s? Uh, yeah, I had a P250 at one point. Uh, and I mean, it's a fine firearm. There's nothing wrong with it. I mean, like the trigger pull was a little bit on the crappy side, but you know, at the price point they were selling new at about 400 bucks, $425, like totally okay. Okay. But, and, and is the P320 an improvement in your mind over that? Um, yeah, yeah. I, I think if they were selling them right around 399, uh, 425, I'd be a whole lot happier with it as, as oh, a whole. Okay. I just, I Price point is the big thing for you. Um, well, I don't have a problem with the company being profitable. I have a problem with the company being greedy. Um, when you're charging me, uh, you know, 40 bucks per mag, when I know that Metgar sells these things for 20 bucks and they make a healthy profit, like that bothers me. You like, don't have to buy that mag then. Well, Period. It's like that scope right in front of you. That scope right in front of you probably cost them fifty dollars to make out the door. Uh, no, it certainly doesn't. I, I've been in. Uh, <laughs> well, once again, if it costs five thousand or five hundred, you don't have to buy it if you don't want to. And yeah, a lot of the, no, a lot no, of the, a lot of these guns run on just pure like HKs. They don't cost what they cost to make. Come on. Yeah, um, I think you don't listen. No one has to do anything. Right, you, you don't have don't to want to. You know, but you know, at the same time, you can still complain about it. There's, mean, thousands, there's, no there's thousands of choices. Yeah, but what's wrong with complaining about it? I've heard no, you complain wrong about with it. Nothing wrong yeah. with it at all. Just you don't have to. Yeah. Have, right. Yeah. Have to buy it. No, I mean, I get that. I get that. I get yeah. that. Yeah. But um, you know, when like the magazine, which I do have to buy if I want to own a P320. Well, then you shop. Um, right now, it's a right now it's a buyer's market for all everything. So if you pay too much, it's your fault. I mean, that's my opinion. So, okay. What's the uh, magazine that the P320 uses? Is it a Sig specific? A, yes, it is a Sig specific 250 320. Yeah, mag. yeah. I mean, that's you know, that's the same. That's the reason why you see a lot of folks going with the uh, CZ Scorpion versus the MPX or something. You well, know? yeah, like magazine cost is a real thing. Like, yeah. I know, Walter. Now you got them cheap magically because because there's a glut. Yeah, because there's a glut. Right. So if, maybe at some if, point, at some point there might not be, but right now it's a buyer's market. Yeah, I hate to bring up the politics of this, but if a lot of gun manufacturers well, who are betting on the Hillary, the Hillary, can, the Hillary is, strategy of selling guns, if they would have gotten their way, it would have been real expensive. You can't avoid the politics on that one. It's just there. It's the yeah. Fact. I know. I know. So the thing is, is that I think that, okay, for example, here's the thing. Um, you can tell me what you think about this, Patrick. So if there's better or, or if there's g other guns in the market in that category that are cheaper, you know, that's what people are better going to, right? Not necessarily, no. I mean, no? Like, okay. uh, so the, the, the thing about like the firearms themselves, um, like you should take everything into account. You shouldn't just be like, all right, well, you know, the 320 is X amount of dollars. Um, well, I can do that, or I can buy a Glock for the same money. And like, you got to take into account what you want to do with it. I mean, do you have a, a specific requ requirement that the, the 320 meets that the Glock doesn't, or um, is a FN 509 going to be a better option for you based on your requirements? Uh, now, like for me, if I were looking for something, I don't need to configure it any other way. I need a nine millimeter that carries at least 15 rounds. In a compact, um, you know, form factor, I'm going to go for uh, the, the Glock 19 because the mags are cheaper, and I'm a mag whore. Like when I get a new gun, I probably buy anywhere between five and fifteen magazines, depending on how often I anticipate using that gun, uh, because I believe that they're consumables, and like I don't treat my mags nice um, because I, I, they are consumables. Uh, you know, it, it, like that—that's my my primary objective is making sure. Yeah, they're not meant. Like they're not necessarily meant to last, so it is something that you're right. going to have to replace. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, like that's that's kind of my my thought process on it. Like I'm going to go with whatever I can purchase that has the cheapest mags that I know is going to be a, a reliable firearm. Yeah, right. You know, and for anyone who's seen that video of Patrick getting fired, the <laughs> like Patrick is actually um, Glock blind. So, in other words, he doesn't see anything except the clock. According to that video, that's not. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, that was the joke, yeah. Yeah, obviously, that's not real. Maybe it is. No. 
I'm sure that's based in some kind of reality, Patrick. No, no, no. <laughs> oh, do you do you actually know what a 1911 is? <laughs> oh yeah, no, I own one, but um, no, but uh, I carry this gun today. Okay. Not a Glock. Oh. I was about to say to you, it's not a 1911, but yeah, it's definitely not a Glock. <laughs> no, that's, that's that's not a Glock right there. <laughs> yeah. No, it's so, a, it's an FN. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> now, listen. Okay, let's uh, let's transition here really quick because this is something I noticed that you guys aren't covering yet, or maybe I missed the article on your on the uh, on your blog. So Glock's launching uh, Gen Five. Have you yes, heard about uh, that? I don't know anything about it. I'll, I'll, I, I know that uh, we do have somebody. Uh, somebody has been to the event, uh, and they're they're privy to what they're releasing. I wasn't that guy. Um, I saw so, a leak. someone from TFB has gone to the event. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll okay. be releasing something on the thirtieth. Okay. Uh, you guys are under an embargo it. or something right now. Yes. Oh, okay. So, so maybe the news that we're seeing from other places is just a leak or whatever, right? I, I, I mean, the only thing I've seen pop up is something about a uh, a pre-order of a, a Gen Five. Okay, so I know I know Steve might be watching. There could be uh, some innovation. I don't, huh? I don't know if you're gonna get. I don't know if you're gonna get into any trouble or get fired or whatever. Again, if I, I if I read if I read from the Truth About Guns. <laughs> no, 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 you're fine. <laughs> no, I'm just I'm just messing around. So yeah, so this article is on the Truth About Guns. Says Glock Gen uh, Five launch party set for August 26th. Glock dealers will be rolling out some new products on Saturday, August 26th. This will mark the fifth generation of quote unquote perfection since Glock's first hit the market back in early 1980s. How many of you plan to participate in any of these launch parties? Uh, Glock fans will no doubt yeah. eagerly snap up the new guns as fast as they hit stores. Blah, blah, blah. Oh yeah, so just, like, just like an iPhone. So can you comment on that or are you actually under an embargo of some sort? I'm not under any embargo. Okay. Um, like I, I don't know anything. Um, don't I anything. would expect <laughs> maybe a Gen 5. I don't think it's gonna be a new model. Um, I know that a while back, uh, I'm gonna, I mean, I don't see if there's any details. Okay. Um, yeah. And I don't know how much details do, 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 there are in there. And for anyone who doesn't know what I mean when I'm talking about an embargo, basically, you know, sometimes you like these companies let you see some stuff, but they tell you, you can't talk about it until this time. Yeah, so, like the FN five hundred nine was an example. Of, that was a gun that I was embargoed on. I, I learned about that back at Shot Show, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in January, and I don't think that the release date was until what April. Yeah, I know. I had one of those for Glock when they put out the MOS because they sent it to me early, way before Shot Show, mm -hmm. and they were, and I had to sign a whole bunch of paperwork, <laughs> you yeah. know, saying I was not going to release that until at least midnight, the day of media day. So when it clicks yeah, over yeah. into to midnight and it's now the next day of media day, that's when we could release something. So, you know, yeah. and you want to honor those things. You know, you don't want to, you know, if you say you're going to do it, that's one thing you should definitely do it. And then I guess if you mess with them, then they'll put you on their bad their bad list. But whatever. I'm on a lot of bad lists. Well, so. no, no. Like you can, you can actually be sued for it. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know have you, I mean, have you. Very serious. Have you guys, um, in the process of writing or you know running the YouTube channel, have you ever gotten into fights with companies and and then they ban you or blacklist you or whatever you want to call it? I, that I, ever happened? I don't, I don't, I don't deal with that. Um, <laughs> we uh, that's why we have editors. Um, mm -hmm. Thankfully, TFB allows us a very cool uh, way of covering firearm stuff. Like you, you, you need to you know be in good graces with people to get you know. Uh, t and &E products and all that good stuff and TFB since we've got so many different opinions uh, We only have one person that deals with the companies So whenever that one person calls and says hey, I need to get a such-and-such such for review um, Whoever's on the other end of that phone can't be like well. No, you said something bad about us So you know, we don't really have any issues with that. Oh, okay, so they don't ever say so they they disconnect you know, TFB yeah. from that person? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm not, not necessarily disconnect TFB from that person, but um, you get a situation where, like, TFB, it's understood that TFB isn't 
one person with one thought process, but that there are varying opinions on um, on everything when it comes to uh, TFB. So that that really does like help us out and avoid conflict because you know Frank K might feel that the P320 uh, debacle wasn't that big of a deal, whereas I feel like it was a bigger deal, and Nathaniel F might feel like it's an even bigger deal than that. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, it, it, Nick Chen might want blood because he bought six P P three twenties because he thought it was a second coming of Christ. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Um, so you don't expect any cool. trouble when you go to the sick booth at Shot Show. Oh no. <laughs> you know, um, honestly, I mean, the the reason why I'm asking about this, I think companies need to get over a lot of this stuff and just realize that you know, one way or the other, we're gonna you know, we're, we're gonna have access to things one way or the other. And, you know, ultimately all of this helps them. Like, I think even this thing that went down with the P320 helps SIG make a better gun. Uh, yeah, maybe, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. I haven't seen the, uh, the upgrade parts yet. Yeah, but, it, it you know, it's still part of that whole process of, of making things better. And there's no guns out there that, have just, that I know of. I mean, and I don't know that much, but there's no guns that just came out and they were just absolutely perfect with zero problems ever. You know, out of the gate. So I don't know. Maybe Walter can fill us in about that since he was around since like Methuselah times. Oh, stop it! Yeah. Were there any ever? Were there any? Yeah, it's, there called ever, a, it's called it's called a Mauser ninety eight. There we oh. go. <laughs> really? That was perfect from the beginning, uh, huh? Well, you know, once again, you choose one, and somebody else says no. You know? Yeah. Okay. So you're never going to have everybody agree whether something's great or something's not great. So. Yeah. Because everybody's got different. Different opinions on things for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So um, now, are you into bullpups, Patrick? Uh, a little bit. A little bit. Um, like I'm still waiting on IWI to send me my X95 because I think that's probably the best bullpup on exist in existence that I've had a chance to shoot yet. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't have a problem with bullpups. Okay. Have you There's had a chance to see Desert Tech's MDR? I have shot the MDR. Okay. Where did you where did you shoot it? Um, it was at shot last year at a event called Burgers and Bullets. But yep. I went back so we were there. Oh, so the, okay. I think we were all in that same event then. Yeah, we yep. were there. Yeah. So what did you think about it? <laughs> yeah. I mean, obviously, shooting it in an event like that doesn't really you know give you a lot of data to go with. No. But, um, um, based on my limited you know experience with it. Recoil was a little bit on the stiff side uh, for what it was. I felt um, probably, you know, I don't know how it's laid out operationally, but it's probably oversprung uh, or overgassed, undersprung rather. Um, you know, it, it, I feel like there were some developmental problems. Like I know one of them went down at the event, so that that kind of is a little bit of a red flag. Uh, yeah. Um, one of my things, one of the things I realized from the event is that they were loading, not all the guns, but they were, um, they were putting the wrong ammo in the guns. So they were 308s, and sometimes it was 308, but sometimes it was 6.5 Creedmoor or something like that. Yeah. Well. Yeah. So that's what, because I know for me, when I was watching other guys go, it was basically like a bolt action. They would shoot one round, they had to, you know, um, get it out and all that kind of stuff. And then when I went up, it was fine. And then after that, there were people that had problems. And so when we were talking to them, they said that they, they had, um, they had like match 308 and just regular 308 or something. And the match stuff was a problem. But then later on after the show, like maybe a couple of weeks after we came back, they, um, they came out and said that what happened was they had Creedmoor accidentally got mixed in. Yeah, that's just five read more. So yeah, it's a little weird. I don't. That's you know, a little amateurish, actually. Yeah. <laughs> so well, the reason why I'm asking you is because I know yesterday people were pointing out to us, and we looked into it. I think that they they have started to trickle out. So maybe there's about a hundred units that went out, mostly to people in Utah. So <laughs> here, yeah, um, you've got a guest in there with you. Yeah. So. Stop it. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, um, so maybe that's uh, – cause I know a lot of people are concerned that that's kind of like a unicorn, never going to come out. Um, it's not the – price-wise, it's not the cheapest bullpup that's out there at all. 
And in the category, yeah, it's probably yeah. the most expensive one. Because I think it's around 2500 I want to say. So, you know, know. okay, I folks want to know what kind of dog, what kind of dog is that? Uh, yeah, it is a Belgian Malinois. Okay, Belgian Malinois, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, let's see if there's any other uh, things going on in here. Okay. Um, okay, someone, this is a comment from someone. They want to know if you can ask James to stop wearing short shorts when he shoots. That's from uh, Mr. Some Guns. You know, I've tried, <laughs> but he started wearing shorter shorts. Oh, really? <laughs> He thinks that's sexy or something, or I, you know, I don't know. Whatever, whatever makes his wife yeah. happy. Yeah, you know. Listen, just avert your eyes, dudes. You know, or can you guys put a can you guys put a filter effect on him? Like a pants filter? Who does the yeah? Who does the editing? Um, each one of us does it. So, like, I do my editing on my videos. James does his own editing. Miles does his own editing. So everybody does their own. Yeah. So that way you get to maximize your own sexiness. You know. I do a terrible job of that. <laughs> Listen, you know, it's it's not easy. It's not easy to be sexy. Just take it from me. So <laughs> I, mean, I, I was hoping maybe to get it from like a subject matter expert, but Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, if I, I can give you some tips if you want. I don't know if I want to share it with the whole world, all my sexiness tips. I would say uh, definitely, you know, hey, get yourself a mohawk. That might help. That's definitely. Oh, I tried that once yeah. many, many years ago. It didn't. Uh -huh. it go. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing sexy about me. Okay, that is not uh -huh. my plan. If I was trying to go for the like sexiness thing, you would not be seeing me all the time on the channel. You'd see more of Walter. Walter now. Oh, always, I notice now Walter likes wearing uh, shorts also. I notice when, when I'm shooting, when it's like 92 degrees outside. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. yeah. Oh man, if I'm out shooting, I don't care what what temperature it is. I'm wearing long pants. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> well, I Listen, that. that's not the you know that's not that's not terrible. I I once went shooting with some guys that came to the range in shorts and flip flops. Yes, and it did not go well. It did yeah. not go well because we were shooting at steel. And um, they had like, uh, you know, I don't know if I should even talk about this, but they had frangible rounds and they were like, oh, let, we're going to show you. And, and by the way, this was not my range. This was a range somewhere else that I had to get special permission to be on. Hmm. So we were on this range and um, they wanted to show me the frangible against the steel and it was the wrong kind of steel. So the frangible tore up their legs and there was blood all over their legs. Oh, well, you know, and then the safety guy from the range comes walking up <laughs> shut down. Yeah. So it was it was a nightmare. And I was like, how can you guys be, you know, these so are like, yeah, these are professional. <laughs> these are professionals, people in the industry. And they came to shoot with shorts and flip flops. So well, I, maybe, you know, maybe they were sales types. Uh, you know, <laughs> I don't know. I guess I don't I care. Don't, how, I don't, I don't, yeah. Yeah, I don't care how hot my legs get; they're just gonna have to survive. But you know, I mean, I got scrawny yeah. legs, so. Well, if you got bird, I mean, if you got bird legs, you know. huh? A lot of the time, like when I'm out shooting, I, I, I'll end up walking through tall grass or something like that. So it's always boots and long pants. Um, you know, and if I'm shooting prone, I really don't want to scuff my knees up uh, because that's just weird for a dude to have scuffed up knees. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean that's that's just, that's that's my thought process. Yeah, you don't want anyone to think you've been down on your knees a lot. <laughs> Is that what, what well, you're saying? Well, I mean, I, I could uh, I could avoid that. Uh, that'd be mm -hmm. great. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, somebody asked earlier, Mister uh, Some Guns asked what my favorite um, my favorite gun was, and man, like. Are you asking like what handgun? What, what, yeah, what is he? What, what what is he asking? Like handgun, rifle? Well, okay. I mean, what's your favorite handgun? Let's go. Let's do both. I mean, yeah. Uh, all right. So, like a favorite handgun is going to be a, a Glock nine millimeter of some type. Um, the reason I like them is the grip is all the same. It all comes up on target roughly the same way. There's so many parts out there for them. Magazines are cheap. Um, and they work. 
Uh, I mean, they might not be the sexiest things, but it's this. Is the and tool. what's this? What's this uh, Glock that you have there? If you don't mind, just holding it up still for a second. Uh, yeah. I know you're kind of like a very fre uh, frenetic person. So okay, very cool. So is this something you put together or you bought? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this is something I put together. Um, it's uh, I think I picked up the frame for seventy five dollars from somewhere and started digging through my bin of parts and came up with most of the stuff. Um, and what I didn't have, I bought used. So uh, this is a six hundred dollar gun altogether with the RMR or the the light on it and everything. Was it stippled or did you do that stippling? I, I, I did it, yeah. Okay. It looks terrible. <laughs> it's probably, I don't, <laughs> I've never stippled, so it's probably, you know. Yeah, if you, if you look at it, Let's it see. It's, it's, it's awful. It's just terrible. You can see the border looks just awful. <laughs> hey, I've seen the stuff they're doing now with lasers. You know yeah, what? It's, That's some badass stuff, I'm telling you what. I mean, it's, it's, it's cool, but man, it's just so uniform. Um, uh, it, well, I, I'm, I like I'm sure you can probably make it ununiform. It's just a matter of who's programmed the laser. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's like uh, done. Yeah. I mean, that's another way to pay for that laser I want to get. So, yeah. So, yeah, hey, so go. listen. So, how does it how does it work for you, man? Do you um, the stippling doesn't like rub you raw or anything like that? No, man. No. Yeah. Um, actually, um, I don't. How are you care carrying that? One? No, this this one here is like my desk gun. So like, oh, okay. my, yeah, when I'm in my office at home, this is what lives inside my desk drawer because uh, I don't carry a gun on me when I'm sitting here. Uh, for okay, hours, you don't you don't time. home carry. Um, no, I do. Uh, but like, if I'm sitting here at my desk working, um, I appendix carry a Glock 43. I don't okay. really have that appendix all day long while I'm you know at work. Um, my other like not at home so if i do uh, open carry or anything like that then you know we roll with the other glock 19. okay hold on let me lock it on you here okay so you've got a um this is my rolling special build i've been slowly covering what we did to this 19 to turn it into what it is. And it's got to be the best shooting gun I own. Um, and I've shot, you know, like, it's probably the best shooting handgun I've, I've shot, period. Um, I've shot Wilson Combats, Les Bear, 1911s, um, you know, and like other built blocks. But this thing feels like um, it's every bit of, as much quality as the other ones. Uh, but it's all business. And, uh, it's kind of a cool concept and you know if we have time here in a little bit i'll get into um a little bit about this particular uh you know concept but uh it, it just works really really well in my little did you stipple that one also no uh this was my buddy uh tom over at uh, txt custom gunworks um and he's a good friend of mine and he did both the uh the grip and the end plate on it as well Okay, cool. We've got uh, Exhale in the uh, chat. He says he can fix your stippling thing. He also does stippling. So, um, yeah, you know, Tom has uh, <laughs> Tom's offered to fix my stippling work on that other one, and uh, I just, eh, you know, I, it's fine. It's it it does the stipply thing. It's grippier than it was before, so I'm happy with it. Yeah, if it works for you, man, that's all. You know, does it have? Do you? You know, some people think guns have to be beautiful. Do you think? Do you? Nah. Yeah. Look at this yeah. thing. Is, is that is that beautiful? No, I mean like. No. Well, I mean it's yeah, beautiful to me. <laughs> you know, it's not high. ugly to me. <laughs> you can see that, like, the milling is through the roll marks, and yeah. you know, like, I, I mean, I don't, yeah. I don't care. You know, it's like I was listening to a, I was listening to a rap song the other day. I don't I can't remember if it was Kendrick Lamar or who it was, but he says he's like tired of all the Photoshop chicks, and he wants to see yeah. some stretch marks <laughs> for a change. You yeah. know, <laughs> listen, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that, man. That's character. <laughs> uh, Walter's shaking his head. No, no, I'm not. I'm not. You know, I, I. Yeah. You like nope. your guns beautiful, Walter? I I like my guns going bang yeah 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 i mean that's all i care about is yeah. um 
you know, they, that they work. You know, that's once again, that's a, that's a beauty in the eye of the beholder. Some people, yeah. some people like the maxed out everything on their gun look and other people's don't. You know? Yeah. Now what I noticed Walter doesn't like to do, and I like to do, you can tell me what you think about this, Patrick. If I'm shooting and stuff, I'm one of those guys that will drop my magazines or drop the gun yeah. and stuff like that. And there's people that don't like that. You know, people that think yeah. like, who the hell do you think you are? Are you trying to be tactical? <laughs> no, man, like I'm not, I'm not, you know, I mean, like I do it all the time. In most of my videos, a mag hits the ground. Um, like I said, they're consumables. I, I, you know, that, that I don't really care. Uh, like, my gun is a consu consumable. Like, eventually, this is going to wear out. I'm going to need to repair it, or I'm going to need to replace it, based on how much I shoot. And I think that realization comes with like, yeah, you know, enough time at the range. When you, when you get out of the range and you shoot a whole lot of ammo, eventually you're like, man, like this thing is just a, it's just a tool it's like gonna wear out like my tires do or a car does over time so like why, yeah. why do i need to treat it like it's some sort of magical thing yeah also i think people could train however they want to i know from i'm not trying yeah. to be tactical i don't care about being tactical but you know i'm just trying to train my brain and i don't do it all the time but i'm trying to train my brain that if something happens i just don't think about it drop that magazine get another one you yeah. know or drop that gun go go to another one so that's just it for me I know some people don't want to damage their stuff they just have to bear in mind that if that's what they do in practice if something really goes down that's what they're gonna do you know under stress you know that yes, they'll be I mean, more concerned about their magazine and putting it down gently or putting it in their pocket than the person who's shooting at them yeah I mean and, and that's something like very rarely will I stop what I'm doing and pick it up like I was at an event last week or a week before um, and was Crimson Trace, we were shooting inside of a cave in Kentucky, and I, like, stopped where I was, kept the gun on the target, reached down, picked the magazine up, put it in my pocket, because I did, we only had so many magazines, um, and I didn't want to trample on it or something. So, there, there are only a few circumstances where I'll stop what I'm doing to pick it up, but, I mean, realistically, if a mag is empty, like, I don't need to retain it, I just need to drop it, put a fresh one in, and drive on. Yeah. Now, listen, I know there's some people probably like asking questions or complaining because you're working on stuff and I'm yeah, not no chastising. Sure yeah, I'm not chastising you for it. But guess what, man? You know, the whole reason of me doing this is so that we can see gun guys and see who they are. And I'm perfectly happy with you working on shit next to you shooting, which would be beautiful if we could actually, you know, get some shooting going on or while we're live. You know, I don't I don't care if you're working on stuff and fixing things or whatever. You know, that's. That's cool with no, me, man. Like, yeah, I mean, I got I to gotta take time where I can because, yeah. you know, I, 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 I probably work 80 or 90 hours a week. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, I got a baby and a wife and a family. Um, you know, like, I, I got to find time where I can. Yeah. Walter, if you see any questions in there, let me know. Um, so I see here someone asked a question about Vortex and primary arms, and they want to know if it's true that yeah. Vortex and primary arms are made in the same place. With the same so, stuff. Uh, I, I don't know. Um, there is a factory in Japan. Now, you have to keep in mind um, Kawas, uh, Vortex, Primary Arms, Night Force, all of these have glass produced in the same factory. The difference is how they're put together. Um, so, it, just because the glass is made in the same place, just because the lenses are made in the same place, doesn't mean it's the same quality of scope. Um, there are some scopes that are much, much better. Than others, and some scopes that aren't quite as good, and they're all made in the same place. Yeah, that's just the way manufacturing is today. I think what yeah, what yeah. it comes down to is also the um, the quality control. So some stuff's made in China, some stuff's made in Japan, some stuff's made in America. It's the quality control. Some companies send or, or are more strict on what's going on. Let's say in China with uh, with quality control and some aren't. And then also all these companies have different um, uh, warranties or wh however you want to put it that they have on there. Uh, although I think that like, so for example, Vortex famously has like this lifetime thing that you could do whatever you want to it. But Primary Arms also, I think is switching over to that. And uh, that's it's not, what I heard. Yeah, and it's not, a, it's not a bad thing. I don't think it's a bad thing, but it's also just a little bit of like, you know, it's a little bit of that magic, 
to get you to buy it. So that's why I think that primary arms is switching over to saying the same thing, like, hey, we'll cover this. Um, you know? Yeah, you know, I mean, I think that that, you know, we'll cover this thing forever kind of mentality is something that people look for when they're spending big money on something. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I don't think it's realistic. And I think there's a lot of times when it's probably not going to apply. I don't, I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, but I, I don't really look at that when I buy something like the fact that I've got a lifetime warranty on my uh, Vortex Razor. Like that's great because it's an expensive scope and I know how hard I am on things. Like I know that, um, you know, every gun I own has a scuff on it or a ding on it. Um, and you know, I know that I'm going to drop it at some point, it's going to get knocked around. Uh, so it's kind of a nice peace of mind, I guess. You know, I don't know if it was a, a driving force in my decision. Mm -hmm. Do you uh, have, what kind of things do you think about when you're getting optics? Do you have a price limit or do you, you know, like some guys, there's the rule, um, your optics should be twice as expensive. No, I don't have a rule. Uh, like this one, this one was, um, this is for a project that I'm doing with, like I said, Alamo Precision Rifles. And yeah. they're building a rifle that is going to be as close to um, the most popular PRS parts possible. So we looked at the uh, Precision Rifle blogs, um, like what the pros use thing, and picked parts that were most like those that the pros use, the most common parts you might see on a professional's rifle. And um, this just happened to be the number one scope. Um, now on the 223 build that we're doing, um, I'm going to be building a 24 inch 223 Remington uh, 700. And that one's going to get a Bushnell uh, HDMR2 with uh, the H59 Horus reticle in it. And, I, I mean, I prefer that reticle, but for PRS stuff, the um, reticle in this one, I think it's the EBR2C, is really kind of ideal. Okay. Yeah, I think, you know, I mean, so you're saying you don't have, like, everything has to have a Vortex or anything has no, to have no. Loophole on it or uh, Night Force or I don't know. I can no, keep no. probably coming up with optics. Yeah, no, no. I mean, um, when it comes to pistols, uh, I, I look for something that's going to do the job, uh, like, you know, handguns. Um, for something that's a range toy, Vortex Venom uh, is perfectly fine, you know. Um, like, I, I've got one on my 2245 Mark IV that I like a lot. Um, the rifles, now, if I'm looking for a red dot, it's an aim point, and that's the only choice there is, because that's the only choice that will hold up to what I need it to. Um, I, I was one of the ones that you know took the uh, EOTech buyback. The yeah, I did that too. <laughs> like longer range, um, yeah. You know, it really depends on what I'm doing with it, and like, is the quality of glass where I need it to be? Does it have the magnification I need it to? Is does it have the right reticle? Those are the things I care about. Um, uh, I get picky when it comes to like things, weird things like mounts. Uh, you know. Uh, other things like holsters, I get picky about holsters and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I mean, okay. not with not with not with the big dollar items. Okay. For whatever reason. I'm glad you're talking about builds because I brought some show and tell. I know you've got some stuff to show other than the Glocks, right? Oh yeah, yeah. So I brought some show and tell stuff. Now, um, what do you think? What do you think about uh, Stag Arms? Are you into Stag? Um, I mean, <laughs> yeah. You know. I've never been like a, a brand loyal kind of guy. Yeah. So if this is rad, then I'll buy it. Yeah. So this is the Stag Ten. Stag Arms has their uh, three hundred eight. So this I is like the that. Bones version here. Let me lock this for a second on me, so I can show you. So now they have a they have a full gun that's out um, in a few different forms, but they also have a Bones version. I think Bones versions of rifles are pretty cool because that way you get to do whatever you want to. With the rifle and maybe you know instead of getting a bunch of stuff you don't want and then you're going to take it off and put it in a box or whatever you can get it so the bone the, the bone strip down version is around a thousand bucks but what's happening with this particular build is that stag gave this to me so i can give it away so i'm gonna build this up into a nice you know ar10 and then we're gonna give it away so here's the bones version and so what's the stag, we got on that huh what barrel length is that? Um, this is this is your standard, standard sixteen. 
Okay, sixteen. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You know. Um. Now. 16, so. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So now, Stag Stag gave up the rifle, but um, Brownells that you got fired from. Uh, awesome people. Yes, they are awesome people. And I saw in your video that when you were at Brownells, I saw Roy, who's one of the people. Which I'm shocked that Roy fired you, man. He's so nice. I know he's, he's just the nicest guy. <laughs> he's a cool dude. So Brownells actually is getting together with me and helping me get all the parts that I want. So like, you know, this is a UBR, the Gen Two. Ah, we're gonna just install one of my rifles. Those things are rad. I oh, like cool. It. I've never, I've never used one, but Brownells. Shout out to Brownells. They sent me that. There's a bunch of cool parts in this. The reason why I'm showing it is because uh, people are always asking me about this dream. It's basically like a dream rifle build that we're doing so they sent me a bunch of parts it's going to have a midwest industries dpms because it's a it's a dpms style ar-10 i know there's a bunch of different styles i think dpms is oh, LR, one of the popular LR, ones right lr pattern yeah so they sent um this is an mlock handguard that's going on there from midwest industries that that all came from uh from brownells brownells sent me like a uh jp enterprises Low profile gas block that's going into nice. that. I just want to show everyone all the stuff. Radian Raptor, the AR-10. That's going to be the charging handle. You know, we got like a Hogue grip is going on that bad boy. There's, there's lots more stuff. I'm going to put a Law Tactical folder on there just to keep it great. Why? <laughs> Why? I know, I know that from, I don't care. It doesn't mean, I know. I know what you're going to say, Patrick. But, Actually, I don't know if you can. Yeah, we'll find out. <laughs> I don't know if we can either, because I uh, haven't I haven't done any of that. Um, they sent me this really nice trigger. I'm not. I, uh, so it's an SR Gold two stage trigger, and I gotta unpack this because this trigger is really. You know, I think you know we should put a two stage on a AR10. So there you go. There's the trigger. Nice little trigger pack that's going in there. So that's also came from Brownells, you know. And uh, let me see. I think that's most of the stuff that came from Brownells. I got a few other things. They sent me some tools, but from UM Tactical, I don't know if you ever heard of this. This is the Rage Compensator, and UM Tactical hooked us up with this. And this is going to go, you know, this is the muzzle device that's going to go on there. Um, basically, you can tune this for how you shoot. Have you heard of these things? Ah, uh, yeah, uh, so, uh, the screws and taking it out, right? Yeah, yeah, I haven't done it. It's you know, it looks like there's a little. It's a little bit of setup. <laughs> you know, you've got to go through a particular thing, but we're gonna put it on here, and all of that I'm gonna put on that gun. Maybe some other stuff. You know, like like Patrick just said, like if the law if the law tactical folder doesn't work, then we'll have to come up with something else crazy. And and the reason why we haven't done this giveaway yet is that you know. After I put all these things together, we're gonna get it coded. So we're gonna get this. We're gonna get some kind of finish on this. Um, I'm in talks with with a company right now, but I don't want to jinx it, so I won't say who. But I'm in talks with someone to help us and put a real badass finish on there and all that kind of stuff. And then guess what, man? I'm gonna give it away to someone. That's very generous. Very yeah. Funny. So, you know, that's going to happen. That's going to be going down. I know people are always asking me about it. So you were talking about build. I figure I would, like, you know, steal that opportunity. What other builds do you have going on? Um, well, I've got uh, my second, like, home defense rifle going here. Uh, okay, cool. Still have to find a barrel for it. but um, Yeah, it looks good. <laughs> yeah. It's, um, it's, it's a laser good. right now with the light. Basically, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Me, I bet wife. you you I bet you you can still scare the crap out of someone with that, you know. But you better be able to I, well, back I mean, it up. One. Okay, looks like looks like. Uh, oh, you're you're um, yeah. you're asking you're asking your wife to get the other one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I'm I'm one of those guys that uh, if I really believe in a particular build, I'm going to build two. Um. So this is where this one's sitting at. Where it differs from the other one is uh, take the upper off and get it out of the way here. This one's got the this one has the UVR Gen two on here. Oh, it does. And, okay, cool. Uh, nice. Yeah. So this is uh, the UVR two. 
Um, and I think this one's going to get a variable uh, one to six, probably uh, uh, maybe a vortex or something. I don't know. Uh, either that or uh, Bushnell's got the um, mm -hmm. one to eight. That's pretty awesome. Uh, so I used that at the Saint event on the Springfield Armory Saint, and like on a 16-inch barrel that was non-preloaded, I was hitting stuff um, at a uh, thousand yards. Okay. So I was, I was, it was impressed with the optic, very, very clear. Um, but that one will probably get a variable uh, one power. This one is my little on the fence rifle and um a 14 and a half inch lightweight barrel you know saker muzzle device same sure fire protect to same uh super modular geisley mark 8 rail uh 13 inch it's got a uh endpoint comp m4s uh, i think this one's got uh, bcm furniture on it and uh it's one of the nabisky Silencer co lowers. So oh, really? That. Okay. Yeah. Um, how, and those how many were, silencer co lowers are out there? Not a whole lot. So yeah. when the That's Saker almost like seeing a Mac co lower. Yeah. So, like, uh, when the Saker first came out, they offered a promotion for the first, like, two months. If you bought a Saker, you get a free Nabisky lower. And I just happened to order one the day before they announced the uh, the promotion, and <laughs> got hooked up with one. But um, mm -hmm. it's a really nice lower. I've, I've got to say, Nevesky knows how to build a lower for sure. Sweet, sweet. Is yeah. it? So those are okay. Those are the builds that you have going on. Well, that those are yeah, finished right. builds. I know you've got some other builds going on that are not finished. Yeah, uh, I mean. Make it all dangerous again. Put it in the corner. Yeah. Walter, do you have any rifle builds going on? Right at the moment, no, actually. I mean, I got some stuff I want to do, but it's mostly uh, like HK and AK. Yeah, you're doing HK. Okay, yeah, you're not doing any AR style stuff, but there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, no, I mean, I, I got to get back to building AR 10 stuff with that PDW stock. But, yeah. Um, got to finish making the stocks first, so. Yeah. Um, soon. soon. Yeah, soon. You guys, are, I know there are some people out there that are waiting for you to get the 308. Yeah, it's it's coming. It's coming. The 308 done. There'll be no wine before it's time. So, you know, we got to keep working at it. I've yeah. got a lot of buildings. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> no, man, that's, that, that, that's nothing to be sorry about. <laughs> you know, I think lots of guys out there have builds in various stages. You know, I know I like. No, I don't. I don't. I don't count the twenty millimeter as a build. That's like a. Uh, what is that long term project? Uh, yeah, Mister Some Gun says twenty millimeter. I, I don't even think about that when you say builds yeah. going on. It's. But there's lots of different stages. I mean, like I've got stuff that's just in my brain. Then I've got things I've bought like just one part for. <laughs> Stuff I have all the parts for, and I have taken no time to do it. I'm looking at a M1A from where I'm sitting right now, so I just got to buy probably a hundred dollars worth of parts to finish it. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then the, and the labor putting the barrel in and stuff like that. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, you know, there's always kinds of different. Like I think we've got a couple of builds that we're working on in in various yeah, stages. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you know, there's things like these AK bolt carriers laying here that I have ideas for and. Mm -hmm. Stuff like that. We were talking about that um, Groza the other night with Patrick. Yeah. So that's something that'll probably be sooner than later, actually. So yeah, I have to be inspired when I'm working on stuff like that. I just can't do it because, you know, I have to like, yeah, let's let's do it. Yeah, and sometimes like all the things of a build have to fall together, right, or sometimes right. you feel like putting a build together, and then you get every like you think you have everything. This is my yeah. worst nightmare. You, you just think you have everything, and then you find out there's one or two things you don't have. <laughs> you open that box up, and you go, you know what? I'm yeah. gonna put that together today. Yep. Yeah, and then someone's always telling me, um, oh, just take it from this gun or that gun, which is sacrilegious. Oh, I've done that a hundred times. No, oh, I don't like doing that. <laughs> I hate yeah. doing that. <laughs> I've because stolen. if I take a part from another gun, that thing's never getting put back together. Well, yeah. You know, so that's my worst thing. But then always at that time when I figured out that that part's missing, the gun store is not open. 
Yeah, no, yeah. that's why I do it. Is I I'll pirate something off of another gun to get a build done, and then yeah. just reorder it. Uh, right, right, right. Happens all the time. Uh, so some of the builds that I've got going currently. Um, now I showed you guys my 509 earlier, and uh, this has the Apex trigger in it. So uh, if you have any questions about that. Yeah. Kind of okay, I think there were, there were some Apex trigger questions, right? I, 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 yeah, I know I saw some. I just don't remember what it was. Yeah, it's probably way back. We have to scroll up. So anyone who's listening that did ask about the Apex stuff, hit us with those questions again. Otherwise, we've got to scroll back through and find it. And, yeah. yeah, I'm not going to do that. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll yeah. be straight with you all. Um, so yeah. this has the Apex trigger in it, um, and that was installed at FN by one of the techs. Um, so it's, it feels really, really good. Um, the take up is really, really short. Resets real crisp. Uh, so it's pretty awesome. Now this gun is going to get the same stippling treatment that the green Glock had. So it's going to lose this awesome texturing. Um, I know some people have complained that it's got four different textures on the grip. Well, I'm going to fix that. Uh, my one big complaint is the hump on the magazine release that prevents you from depressing it. Uh, it. It also prevents you from getting the magazine out quickly. Oh, is that so that is that kind of like a place for your thumb to rest on? Uh, no, no. no? It, okay. So if you look at it, I'll see if I can get. Yeah, I can see the hump. Um, okay, yeah, I see the hump right there. Yeah, it's around. So the idea is, is to keep you from depressing the magazine release. Okay. Um, inadvertently, and you've got to be very deliberate about it. Okay. So, I find that like I want to hit it right about there, right where that hump is, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna have my guy take that off, and um, you know we're gonna have that stippled up, and then I'll probably send it off to ATEI to have it uh, cut for an RMR, mm -hmm. because red dot is life. Mm -hmm. um, I was checking to see if anybody had chimed up about yeah. that. Now, so why see. why are you, you know, what's the reason for the red dot? Like, I know some guys that I know are just getting blind, so they like red dots. Is that the same um, reason for you, or you just feel like that just works no, better? Really. Actually, I've got a video coming up about that, uh, like five reasons you need to have a red, you should have a red dot on your, uh, on your handgun. Mm -hmm. uh, but target transitions are faster. Once you practice with a dot, you're faster presenting the gun, getting on target, getting that first round off. Um, you don't have three focal planes to pay attention to, you know, target, front sight, rear sight. You have one, and that's the target. Mm -hmm. You just it superimpose the dot on the target, and you're good to go. Um, you know, it can account for, you know, like vision problems. I don't, I don't have any personally, but I know other people that I've shot with, they've got problems where they've got an astigmatism or something going on. And um, the, the second you hand them a red dotted handgun, like they instantly become an amazing shooter, whereas they might not be as good. Um, now, I do have a problem personally, like when I've got a gun uh, up in front of me, like when I'm focusing on the front side, I can't even make out what I'm, I'm you know, is, you know, 10 yards past that. Mm -hmm. um, and if I focus on the target, I can't make out my sights. So I kind of try to line the blobs up. Um, and I've had to kind of find a way to focus in my eyes halfway between the target and the front sight to get enough of both in, in focus to where it, I can build a good sight picture. Uh, but like I once heard Rob Leatham say that sight picture is, you know, it isn't important. It doesn't matter where you focus, rather. Sorry. Um, he once said, you know, I know people uh, – but say front side, front side, front side, and he says, I don't care if you focus on the rear side, I don't care if you focus on the target, as long as you get those sights aligned properly, as long as you've got those sights lined up right and on the target, it doesn't matter. Um, he also said that you need to stop listening to people say, well, you're jerking the trigger because the only thing you do when you shoot fast is you jerk the trigger without moving the sights. Uh, mm -hmm. That dude is like Yoda for guns. Okay. Yeah, what Walter? What do you? I know we lost you for a second. Is your stuff working okay? No, uh, it was my fault. Off rear oh. air. Oh, okay. What do you think about red dot optics on handguns? I haven't. I don't have too much experience with them, actually. I mean, I've used them on rifles and such, and I like them. 
I'm yeah. sure it would. I'm sure it would just work just as well on the once you get used to it on the handgun too. So, yeah. oh god, um, it's awesome. <laughs> I mean, what's the good yeah. brands that you find, Patrick? I mean, uh, is it should everyone just get RMR? You know, Trijicon RMR, uh, or are yeah, there other? You know, so RMR is uh, good to go. Trijicon RMR, the Trijicon RMR Type Two is uh, mm -hmm. even better. Is that the uh, fiber optic one, or I'm not sure what? No, that is. so the Type Two revamped some of the internals on it. It looks externally the same, basically, uh, but they changed like the battery contact and some other stuff. Be, okay. Be, okay. Uh, stuck in a reciprocating slide. Um, so the uh, Leopold Delta Point Pro is uh, pretty good. Uh, it's beefy, but it's it's pretty good. Um, and th this is based on some pretty high volume testing. I've seen some people do. Uh, the RMR will fail more often than, than the Delta Point Pro. RMR is lighter and it's smaller, so it's a trade off there. Yeah. Um, the there are a bunch of other my, uh, mini red dot sites that are fine. Yeah. How does the how does the more. Vortex? Because I I know I've got like um I think I have the Vortex Razor or something like I've got two of the same things, and okay. one of them's fine, and the other one's like you know just not doing well with all the you know going back and forward. So okay. I don't know at what point know, they fail. Yeah, I, I don't know at what point they fail. I know that they I don't think they've been tested to the same uh, level as the RMR and the Delta Point and some of the other one. Uh, Shield RMS is solid. Um, I'm, I'm actually trying to get my hands on one to put onto a red dot, uh, onto an MOS Glock, and just beat the tar out of uh, to see how it'll hold up. What was that again? You said Shield. The Shield RMS. Shield RMS. Okay, I don't. I yeah, never even. So, I gotta look into that one. Do you have one? No, you I, said you're trying to get one. Okay. Yeah, no, I need to get my hands on one. I haven't yet. Um, you know, I, I, a buddy of mine does the marketing for them and. They're really good people over there at Shield. They've had some uh, sites out on the market for a while that have done really well, but the RMS is cool because it's a little bit lower profile than anything else out there, and um, they sell a RMS specific uh, mounting plate for the MOSs, and you don't need to run anything other than stock height clock sites to get a co-witness. Okay. Oh, that's cool. Pretty awesome. Do you, yeah, no, you know really what do you know what their price point is? Oh, uh, let me see. Okay. Uh, Okay. I don't know why I'm on a British site because the site I pulled up is showing me it is pounds. A British company. Oh, <laughs> okay. I'm like, why is it telling me in pounds? Yeah. So if you have you heard of the J Point, the the J Point is the same company. Oh, okay. So this is a British company making red dots. Yeah. Um, I, I'm fifty. Yeah, I'm I'm thinking that there's not a lot of people over in England that are able to buy the well. You know, maybe in law enforcement or something like that. They have a lot of air rifles. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> uh, they, they do have uh, air rifles. They've got 22s. They've got. Uh, they do have handguns and yeah, stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, bolt action rifles. So all of those things are. Um, you know, things kind of that go thing. on there. Okay. Yeah, I know it's 420 with a Glock plate, but realistically, when you're looking at an RMR, um, that you know is going to be more than 420. Just by yeah. itself. Yeah, an RMR uh, is like idea. five something, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Now, what and do you think? Do you do you prefer the battery one or the um, or or do you think uh, the fiber optics better? No, no, no. Oh, okay, you don't like the fiber optic. No, no, and I'll tell you why. I hate the uh, the fiber optic one. Okay. Um, if you have a weapon light on there that is of any intensity whatsoever, anything greater than about three hundred lumen, mm -hmm. uh, three fifty, I think it is. Um, and you're in a hallway, you turn that weapon light on, uh, it washes the dot out, and it takes forever for it to come back. Um, oh. And that's why the uh, my, my choice RMR is the RMR 06, and that's the one that's got the little buttons on the side where you can adjust it um, either up or down. Uh, come on. Yeah, I'm trying to, uh, yeah, right. Oh, you had it. You had it. Come down. Come down. Uh, right there, right there, right there, right there. Yeah. So you know what? Because it's funny, right? Don't doesn't because I a lot of guys I know think that the uh, fiber optic one's the better one, but that's just like a cool factor, maybe, right? It's not practical. You're saying? Um, no, I, mean, I don't. I don't think it's practical. Uh, and actually, the RMR on my uh, desk gun is an RMR09. It's got the really big dot on it. 
like the the guy I bought that from was a friend of mine. He actually writes for uh, TFB, mm -hmm. um, and he wishes he sold me uh, the other one. Right there it is. See that one's a little bit bigger. Yeah, and this is also battery, obviously. So he wishes he would have sold you the fiber optic. Yeah. So <laughs> let me show you what it does. Right there. See so you go away. Well, okay. Yeah. Now you see it come back, right? Uh, no, I haven't seen it yet. Oh, there. Okay. So it'll it'll come back slowly. These auto adjust models are also kind of eh. Okay. Um, but if, if if given the choice, I'll buy an LED model every time. Any, it, you know, like that's the one I'm gonna get. Yeah. See, these things are so complicated. You know, that's why I figured I'd ask you. I don't really. I um. I don't own one, so. It's tough to you know it's tough to figure out, but I guess it all depends on what you're what you're doing and what you're putting on there. And you're saying like what level of lumens on that light creates that situation? And, and, and I've I've seen it with anything over three hundred and fifty, and like the um, TLR one on that gun is like eight hundred. This one is six hundred. So if I've got this and I'm you know shooting at something, or I'm I want to identify a target, I turn that weapon light on, like I've lost my dot. Mm -hmm. So, like this, um, you know, like adjustable model is really the one to get, I think, if you're using it for carry use. Yeah. So, okay, that's, um, that's good info, man. I'm, I'm glad that we touched on that. I don't know if there's any, uh, I don't know, are there any questions out there that anyone was asking about this? Uh, so, did we, did we fully, did we fully uh, cover so it? Didn't like the 509 uh, because of the long grip and short barrel. Um, I'd like to see something. You know, why that is a downside? Um, if you carry an appendix like the short barrel, full size grip is kind of like pretty okay. Like that's a good thing. Um, and even if you carry in at three o'clock, four o'clock, it makes sense too. So I'd like to see why that's a downside. I'm curious, uh, just for my personal reference. And then I saw somebody say that they carry a Glock 21 in a Ziploc inside the shower earlier. <laughs> okay. And I'm also here, curious. Here, I know why you will why... destroy you. Come on. Come so in case someone <laughs> comes to get you when you're in the shower. Oh, man, come you... on. Come on. Yeah. Do you well, think I mean, no why, one's ever coming bother... for you? Huh? Why, why bother with the, uh, the Ziploc bag? If oh, that's true. I don't, you know, maybe they don't want to dry the Glock every single time. Yeah. You know? But I mean, I, I, it doesn't affect I, I, anything. I, I, we 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 leave Glocks out in the rain all the time. It doesn't really do anything to yeah. it. Mm -hmm. Sweaty, sweat in the pocket, oh, man. Yeah, you know. Now, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, you're not you're not against people like carrying in the bathroom. No, I don't. Right? <laughs> no, I don't care where you want to where yeah. you want to carry. Yeah, uh, I carry everywhere. I usually well, I don't know if I should even tell anyone this. Yeah, you're unless, too much info. Unless, too much info. No, no. <laughs> I, what I usually do in the bathroom is I like cover it up with my shorts, because no one's gonna come in there and go looking under my shorts except me. Yeah, <laughs> but that's me. That's me. I'm a little. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't take you don't take any guns into the bathroom with you, Walter. No. Just the one that God gave me, baby. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I hope you. Got, I hope you put a suppressor on it. <laughs> <laughs> a little poopery. You know? uh, so we were. I never got around to the builds I have going. Okay. Oh, cool. <laughs> hey Hank, I'm gonna hit the rack, dude. All right. All right, man. Thanks, Walter. Thanks for joining us. Okay. All right. Hey, so kind of excited about this one. I've got a 308 gun sight scout here. Cool. And uh, we went with Vortex Strike Eagle. So this one's going to be pretty cool. I wanted a 308 truck gun that took AI mags because I'm stupid like that. <laughs> so so uh, this is a truck. This is a truck. truck gun. Yeah, yeah. No, this is this is a truck gun. I've got limited space in my truck, and I can only fit a traditional stock in there. So. But not to be used in the truck, just to be carried in the truck. I mean, if I gotta. <laughs> okay, you can swing that around in the truck. What's your yeah? yeah what's your truck? Just... Uh, 2016 Tacoma, like a Tacoma. quad cap. Okay, yeah. cool. Very cool. Yeah, so, uh, that is short enough to maneuver inside of the truck. Yeah. Um, and then I've got something I wanted to talk to your 
the people listening to the podcast, this is the TFB TV torture test rifle. Uh, so the the barrel wasn't red before; it was the same color as the rest of the rifle. Uh -huh. so this is something I built out of parts in my garage that I had taken off of other builds for whatever reason or whatever is going on that. Um, and I think I only had to get a like bolt. It's like the bolt itself, not the bolt carrier, a bolt and a crush washer mm -hmm. were the only piece, pieces missing. So I want people to tell me on TFB TV what they want to see this be subjected to. What they want to see it, um, like what, what? What do you want to see an AR-15 go through? Oh, okay, right. What kind of torture? Yeah, like uh, you know, what's going to stop it? What's going to make it choke? Um, you know, all the kind of good stuff. Uh, so I, I took it out. I what have you, what have you done? So you haven't done anything yet. You haven't tortured it in any way yet. Oh uh, no, no, I haven't. Um, I painted it because I thought the paint would be like a good way of, like placing it in its timeline of torture. Okay. So the more so you, is missing the, the further along in the torture it is. Okay. So did you just do paint? You did Duracoat? No, this is just spray paint. This is Cryolon. That's that's why it's burnt off of the barrel. Because I yeah. already took it out and, and kind of did a baseline uh, test of it. Yeah. So I okay. uh, did a baseline accuracy test and a baseline reliability test. Okay, I know Exhale is saying what hasn't an AR-15 been through nowadays, you know, I mean, we've seen people do a lot of things. Um, I think definitely banging it up, you know, like throwing it on the side of things, that's something that could happen, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, um, the, the idea behind this rifle isn't to prove that an AR-15 is an amazing thing. Um, the idea is to show that a home build it's possible to build a home build the right way with good tools and like do everything the right way um, and still get good reliability out of oh, okay. it. Okay. So, you, so you're saying you don't want like crazy extreme stuff? No, I mean, if there's crazy extreme stuff, like I'll give it a shot. I mean, um, like the flash hider on that rifle came off of a gun that got blown up uh, by about 10 pounds of Tannerite. So I'm not opposed to doing something dumb to it. <laughs> okay, because I have an idea that I just want to run by you. This would okay. be cool, and I think you guys would be the guys to do this. Take that yeah, thing. Um, huh? No? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not opposed at all to doing okay. dumb stuff. Okay, so here's my idea. Take it and pack it in concrete. Okay? Okay. Pack it in concrete. Let the concrete get hard and everything dry. Then break up the concrete. Take it out of the concrete. I want to see what happens. Okay. <laughs> now that might be too. That might be going too far. I don't know. People out there uh, can tell I mean, me if they think that's going too far. No, I mean, you know, I, I think that I probably might try that. I might do a uh, a, a time capsule. Yeah, because I don't think I've seen anyone do that. Well, that's probably someone's done it. I don't know. I don't know. Who knows? But that would be uh, cool. I probably won't do a max style gauntlet torture test. He's kind of got the market cornered on the gauntlet. Um, yeah. You know, uh, you know, there's no, no reason for me to do that. Um, well, yeah, that's, uh, that's, I'm not going to, I'll make sure that the barrel doesn't get anything in it. Uh, use a, a foam ear plug to make sure that happens. Yeah. Now I wonder uh, if you, if you put it in concrete, how if the question is, how do you get it out of the concrete? Maybe you shoot it out of the concrete. No. Mm -mm. No. That sounds dangerous as hell. <laughs> <laughs> from a distance, from a distance. Yeah, yeah. Well, maybe, maybe. Um, so, I yeah, mean, you I'm can not... tannerite it out of the concrete, but that's probably more dangerous. <laughs> you know. So I've got those going, um, and then I've got a couple of fun builds that are my, uh, like my personal guns. Like, um, this is something I've been working on this for like three years, and it doesn't look like much because all you see is a muzzle brake, a big fat barrel, and um, like the cheapest handguard that ALG makes. But um, I actually chose the handguard specifically for the build, build for a reason. This is actually going to be my PRS gas gun. Uh, you know, it's my uh, the, the light division. It's going to shoot uh, 223. But I've got a LaRue Tactical 1-8 um, twist 18-inch uh, heavy barrel in here, an Armageddon uh, Tactical muzzle brake, 
like I said, I've got the uh, the cheapest hand guard that ALG produces, but I wanted the low profile one because if you look at it, awesome. Um, if you look at it, that's got, torture that's testing, cool. whatever that is. Yeah, <laughs> failed. Um, yeah. You, you've got a little bit of a riser here, so you can fit an optic a little bit lower with mm -hmm. these railless um, hand guards. And then uh, it's just a billet lower with a Geisley trigger in it, and this will get a uh, Michael Pira stock. But that's kind of in the works. So what, do you have like a set weight for that, or? Um, I don't think so. You're not really concerned with the weight on it? No, it's not real heavy either. <laughs> that looks like your logbook. It, it, yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> it, it got attacked by coffee. Oh, oh no. Oh, there was like a serious crash going on there. Yeah, yeah, no. Uh, I lost my coffee mug. Oh, man. Is it, was that a... Tea, was that a... Um... Yeah. Oh, okay. I was going to say, you know, as long as it wasn't a TFB coffee mug. No, 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 no. I need that. Yeah. Um, no, it was uh, a Department of Homeland Security. So. Oh, <laughs> okay. Uh, build them stronger next time. Build them stronger. Yeah. Did you work for Homeland Security or something? No, or? Uh, actually, my dad does. Oh, okay. That's so, cool. So, I've got a three gun rifle going. Again, I've got that really cheap handguard on there because it's cheap and they work really well. They feel good in the hand. When you say cheap, uh, how much is it? What are we looking at here? Like sixty-five. I think this length, the fifteen inch, is like eighty-five dollars. Okay. Okay. Like with a barrel nut, and like that's that's really really inexpensive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so this one's got a uh, Calvin Elite trigger in it, and that's like a pound and a half single stage. Calvin Elite. Okay, I've never seen that. Hold on, let me lock you in here so we can take a look at this. Okay, so, and and that brings up like someone was asking a question about triggers and like, do you change out the triggers all the time? What kind of triggers do you oh, look yeah. on your guns? Yeah, um, usually Geisley, but uh, like this one is a Timney because like uh, I think this is going to be a three gun gun, um, but you know, a pound and a half single stage is really 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 good. So this is kind of like a flat. It's just for speed, right? Just to like, um, well, actually, you can change the trigger throughout. I just like okay. the world one, but okay. like resets super short. Mm -hmm. um, and I think they, they clocked their uh, pro shooter and they shot, um, what was it, 10 rounds or five rounds in under a second? It was like 0. 0.87 seconds. They did five rounds. Okay. Uh, but it's really, really fast. Um, on this one, we've got a forward controls uh, big mag paddle on it but this will be a um so that's it still in the process yeah yeah those, oh, okay. those are both still in the process of being built like trying to get to a place where uh they're all done and i think the, the three gun rifle is still missing a good muzzle break you could have did you just um, throw out that did you just throw out that mug man you could have totally like yeah. You know, you could have given that to someone out there watching. You know, put some super glue on it and give it away to someone. <laughs> yeah. as, much as, as much as I'm sure they would appreciate me, like, hey, they've got to work for it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We don't um, want anyone cloning Patrick. You know, don't, definitely don't need that. Right now. Want, in fact, uh, no, the, the three gun rifle, that one needs a new safety, it needs a new muzzle brake. And optics, um, it'll get a variable one power, probably a strike even one to six because it's cheap. Uh, the yeah. PRS gun needs a new stock, um, buffer. Um, it also needs optics, obviously, and I think that's it for it. Yeah. Now, someone uh, wants to know um, the question: What's the difference in a billet lower? So, um, uh, so a forged lower. If you look up, like eighty percent lowers. You see, they're kind of these rough-looking things that, uh, you know, it, they're they're really forged pieces of aluminum, and they're milled out to look like a lower, like you think. So this part here comes out of the forging machine, looking like a big lump lump of metal that is vaguely reminiscent of an AR-15 lower, and then they mill out the parts and swage the magazine well. 
to get it to an AR-15 lower. Now a billet AR lower is produced from a piece of billet and it's stuck into a CNC machine. And uh, that's where you get all of these kind of really sharp uh, corners and like the real artsy stuff that you see on them. And uh, there's like some dissenting opinion on what's stronger than the other one. Um, I will tell you that the billet lowers are generally a little bit chunkier than the forage lowers because they require a little bit more material to um, kind of, you know, keep the same level of strength. Okay. So that, I mean, the guys that go for that are usually going for like a more solid, you know, they, they feel yeah. like that's built like a tank. Yeah, it's so either a built thing. like a tank or you, like why it's my, uh, my PRS gas gun uh, rifle is it's because that's a really tight upper to lower fit. You don't need to do anything weird. Like, um, yes, it is absolutely sufficient on a 10 and a half inch SBR. Uh, yeah, they're asking if a, a A2 birdcage is sufficient on a 10 and a half inch SBR. And yes, it is. Um, so. I mean, an A2, a A2 birdcage is good for a lot of things, right? I know people mm -hmm. always take those off and replace them, but they're really not bad, right? I mean. No, no, they're not bad at all. Uh, yeah. They're actually really, really effective. Um, you know, I, I know we were joking earlier about the truth about guns, but um, Jeremy S. over there did a pretty amazing flash header uh, write-up. Uh, he did an amazing uh, muzzle brake write-up as well, and he tested something like 90 different muzzle devices. And yeah, he, then he, yeah, he did video. Yeah, I think yeah, he did yeah. video and all that, yeah. He yeah, just, no, it was really, really rad. Uh, he did a good yeah. job. Yeah, I saw uh, that. That was a good video. Um, what is this? Uh, okay, I know. Okay, someone wants to know if you hunt, and if so, what's your rifle setup for hunting? You a hunter? I don't hunt. <laughs> you got a, you got a tundra. No, I, you know, I've never been hunting. You know, so if I would yeah, love I've to. I've been hunting a couple times. Um, mm -hmm. I've gone pig hunting a couple times, and for that, I used my SBRAR. Um, and then I went dove hunting uh, once. And um, for that, I had a Beretta AL 391, uh, which I still have, and I haven't shot it since I went dove hunting. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> uh, shotgun, right? Is that was that yeah, a, yeah. It's yeah. a 12 gauge, 28 inch barrel, um, mm -hmm. you know, black shotgun. I mean, a pretty run of the mill, but super reliable, uh, super soft shooting, um, really a solid gun. Uh, it was the predecessor to the uh, uh, A400s. Okay, cool. And then um, the other question I've got here is, where do you find slides for your Glocks? Um, so the only one that I've actually bought a slide for my Glock was the Seb slide. And uh, I went to DSG Arms, um, and they had a open box customer return that had some, like, pretty bad uh, machining problems with uh, basically what happened is the customer got the thing, stripped the armor screws out, um, and then boogered up a couple of other things. And, um, my buddy over there said that he couldn't, um, couldn't send it back to Zev and have it repaired. And if I wanted to try it, I could buy it and give it a shot. So I bought it and it, it worked out, mm -hmm. but everything else just comes, um, like I'll buy a Glock and then like my, uh, role in special, my, my green gun, uh, that one went off to ATEI up in Michigan to get the uh, mill. Yeah, it seems to me like you're always trying to find deals. You're always looking for the deals, right? You're not, um, yeah, yeah. yeah, you're not, uh, you know, you're not trying to like have the most expensive, you know, expensive guns out there, so. No, 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 I'm looking for whatever does the best job, whatever, whatever is going to uh, work better than the other one. Yeah, um, Soylent Green, who's been, you know, lots of good comments and stuff like that. Yeah. He says, if you're a man, we've all gone hunting at some point or another in our lives. Fox so, hunting, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I get it. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> um, wink, and, wink. That's not, yeah, not and then uh, Grusha6 uh, wants to know if you have any thoughts or experience with the SB Tactical PDW I pistol brace. don't. I've actually not ever used a pistol brace ever. Um <laughs> okay. No. It's kind of ridiculous. I've never used a pistol never? brace. Um, no, okay. man. Um, I've always I've, since the pistol brace became a thing, I had an SBR. So. Oh. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. I never okay. really had a need. Yeah, I can't uh, knock you for that. We're we're just gonna try to because I want to wrap this up. 
because I know yeah. you know you've been going all day and stuff like that. It's late. Um, uh, Exhale says Kill Shot Precision is a great price and does super clean work. Uh, uh, and what, what kind of work do they do? Kill, yeah, what does Kill Shot Precision do? Exhale, well, let us know. That. Uh, yeah. Um, so, and then I've got a few things. Uh, like, do you uh, b do you like buy anything stock or you build everything? Uh, like rifle wise, or yeah, yeah. Do you you know? Do you just buy any like rifles that are already built, or like every rifle you get, you build you build it up yourself? Uh, like ARs, I own exactly one factory built rifle, and that is a Springfield Armory Saint, and I bought the one that I used at the event. So um, everything else AR related, I've built. Um, I don't own a single AK that was built in a factory. Um, all of those have been built. Uh, we didn't even we didn't even get into the AK conversation. Walter would have loved that before he uh, signed off. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I actually I don't own any uh, factory built AKs. I don't own any um, stock 1022s. Uh, I think the only things that I own that are stock are handguns that don't really have a big market out there, mm -hmm. or I never really uh, embraced. Okay. Do you have any AK build videos? I don't have any AK build videos. No, um, I actually built my uh, my SBR AK before I started working for TFB. It was before the uh, the channel started, actually. Okay. So um, let's see here. Uh, Ruger AR556. That is a solid rifle. That is actually a really really good option for the money. Oh, Exhale says that that company does. Um... They they do slide milling and uh, their Cerakote is pretty good. That company that right, he was mentioning. So Cerakote's uh, reasonably easy to do. Now uh, I'm I'm not I haven't seen any of their work and I'm not saying that it's not good. What I do want to warn you about is um, there are companies out there that people believe do a good job. Now what you don't know is that the outside of every RMR is a different shape and it's a different size. Okay. So a good company will ask you to send your RMR in with the slide so they can measure it, alter the programming, and cut it for your RMR. Now, no other RMR will fit into my slide because it's cut for this body. Okay. Never. Yeah, I never knew that. Yeah, I didn't either. Oh. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> you just yeah, schooled no, me. I didn't either. Yeah, yeah. no, I had no idea uh, until I started getting into it and learning more about it. Um, I'm not, like – if we had time, I'd love to go ahead and get into this gun and like what it's all about because it's really an interesting story. Um, uh, if you, you know, I know that you've taken some time here from the family. If you have time to do it, I mean, you know, it's up to you, man. You, you're always uh, welcome I mean, to come back. You know, I have fun yeah, hanging yeah, with I, you. Well, I was telling you about that um, SBR AK, and oh, there we go. That is. My, this is the first AK that I built. That looks pretty good. Uh, I actually bought it as a pistol and then demilled it and then um, built it up. So what did you use here? What would, like what were you going for? Were you trying to make it look like something that's out there um, or a little crazy? Well, I bought maybe? an M92 PAP pistol. Yeah, M92, okay. And, yeah, and it's essentially an M92 on a fixed stock uh, receiver. Um, if I wanted to be correct, I would have just uh, done an underfolder, but underfolders suck to shoot. So um, I wanted to keep the folding stock function, and it's got a Polish Barrel stock on here. Those are super, super solid. Uh, they don't wobble or do anything funny, and like you know, they fold pretty well. Yeah. So, so you're you're really deep into AKs. No, man. Like no. I own two. Okay, just two, but you like building them and stuff like that. I, I just don't like buying guns in the store. Um, okay. And there's nothing wrong with people that do. Um, I'm just not that dude. Like, I would rather put yeah. my gun together and then. Um, yeah, you know. um, um, Chris B wants to know if that's a Krebs site on there. Uh, no, no, that's. I don't even know who made it, but it, it's a Picatinny rail section that fits in between the factory rear site. And the hinge point, so uh, this actually hinges; it doesn't come off. And like this rear sight portion is all one piece. That's part of the hinge. So this was connected to the trunnion when I got the pistol. 
and I never took it off, but I did add this uh, piece of pick rail. Um, and I That's don't cool. use it because I found that uh, it doesn't co-witness with any red dot known to man well. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, yeah, awesome. Listen, you know what? I, I mean, we, we're going to do something. Uh, we've been doing some stuff on AKs. If, you, if you're interested, you can come back. But also, you can just come back, period, man. Um, you know, yeah, I don't, sure. don't want to keep it going here. I'm sure you want to get back to the family. So I want to thank you for oh, coming dude, on. Um, when, whenever I jump off here, I'm going to go clean up the floor and my desk a little bit and get back to yeah. work. I've got a ton of writing to do. But, yeah. Um, uh, I mean, if I don't know how many people we still have stuck around. Yeah, we got like 42 people right now. So we still we uh, still have a good number of people hanging out with I us. I don't know. I don't know what uh, I, I haven't been watching the numbers on it. Yeah. So that's pretty, you know, it's we like uh, we've been averaging about 50, 60 people. Okay, right on. Yeah, at any one time, right which on. is not bad, you know. That's you know. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 that's not bad at all. Um, yeah. yeah, I just hadn't looked at. It. I've got the the chat blown up on one screen, and then I've got Hangouts on the other. Yeah. So I wasn't paying attention. Yeah, uh, I think I think I we know. did great. I think we answered a lot of stuff out there. You yeah. know, listen, man, I would definitely like to you know have you back on. For sure. And, for sure. and at some point, I will get programmed, and I won't mention any other blogs or anything like that. Maybe. You know, I'm just gonna. I'm gonna have Lola tase you. <laughs> yeah, shock therapy. Yeah. That's what I need. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't you know why. Tase. I don't know why this happens, man. This it's weird. I don't know. I think you it's, messed you messed up once, and maybe somebody didn't correct you. I don't know. No. Yeah. <laughs> no. I know. I've messed it up many times with you. You know, many times. Yes. And for some reason, yeah. it's just like stuck. My brain is like, nope, that's what it is. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, <laughs> yeah, Lola's going to smack me. Up. She wanted to smack me upside the head when we started. <laughs> it's like, I can't um, believe you're doing this again. People think yeah. it's a joke. It's not a joke. It's just my brain just goes, nope. I'm a little bit dyslexic, so I guess that's what it is. There you go. Yeah. Now, I got if issues. Any, if anybody's still watching right now wants to uh, learn a little bit more about this and like how what I what I thought of each piece because as we're building it, um, we are uh, I'm, I'm reviewing every part that uh, you know was done to this gun. Um, so they can check that out over the firearm blog. Um, and if they're interested, I guess we can come back maybe talk about it or I can go through it quickly. Either one doesn't matter. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we can uh, we can do something like that. You know, uh, Crispy says he loves the uh, the video where you got fired from Brownells. Thanks, I think sir. that was a cool video. You know, it was a lot of fun to do. Like, yeah. uh, um, <laughs> um, like I I learned after I rode the conveyor belt because it took some talking uh, to get them to allow me to do that. Um, I'm I know, man. It's like, I, how much weight is that thing rated for? <laughs> A lot, a lot. Um, oh, okay. Think about it. It's, it's got to hold up. It's got to hold ammo, like cases of ammo. Oh, true. Yeah. Okay. Like lots of ammo. Um, mm -hmm. No, I haven't picked up a 19C yet. Uh, Soiling green. I'm kind of waiting to see what happens at the end of the month. Uh, I, I, I've held off on buying any more Glocks until I know what's coming out. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, no. I, I learned that there were only two people that. Uh, were in the building the day that I was there uh, that have ever been on the conveyor belt at Brownells, and uh, I was one of them, and Pete Brownell was the other. Uh, oh, yeah, because I was about to say, that's probably a for real fireable offense. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, it absolutely is. Like, uh, they, they didn't want to let me do it because they were afraid other people were going to be upset that I got to do it, and they haven't been able to do it. Yeah. Um, so, so I, how did, they, yeah, how did yeah. they do that? They, like, made some kind of agreement with everyone that you are the only person allowed. <laughs> No, I had to wait until everyone went home. Oh, okay. Because they'll never see the video. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. That channel it's on is terrible. Yeah. No, no. That was a cool video, man. I like, you know what? I like to see that kind of stuff. And I think that's one of the cool things about Brownells. They're that kind of company. Yeah, yeah. No, they yeah. are. They're, they're a bunch of really cool people. Uh, there's a lot of fresh thinking. And, um, you know, they're just a really good group of people. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, okay. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna keep you anymore, man. Thanks for coming on. Any anything you want to shout out? Anything you want to point people to before we go? Um. Yeah. 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 Uh. Kind of keep an eye out on TFB TV. Uh. Coming up soon. Uh. We're gonna have some pretty cool content. I'm gonna take some 
223 steel case uh, ammo, and I want to see what kind of amazing results we can get out of it uh, with a custom match grade uh, bolt action. So uh, we're going to be doing that. I'm going to try to reach out to a thousand yards with steel case 223. That which, should be interesting. Yeah, I you know I'm 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 afraid because I know it's going to hit transonic right about 850, and it's going to be kind of kind of tough. You'll be uh, lobbing it in. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, no, no, I'm going to be lobbing it in. But um, when a bullet goes transonic, so it does some kind of goofy stuff. Uh, when you're supersonic, the pressure waves up here. Subsonic, the pressure waves on the back side of the bullet. Well, transonic, it's kind of in the middle. So if you think about it, if you've got the pressure back here, like you can still keep things relatively straight. Mm -hmm. if you got it up on the point, it's pushing through that. If it's here in the middle, it's going to do some weird stuff. Like that. Like it's on so, an axis or something. Okay. Yeah. So once it hits that transonic, it's going to be kind of weird. Um, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> it depends yeah. on the weather and like all kinds of stuff. Okay, but cool. Coming up, we've mm -hmm. got a uh, build. A, a, we're going to do a custom build on a Remington 700. We're going to be uh, unveiling a new action uh, pretty soon. Um, obviously, the Glock thing's coming up and a whole bunch of other great projects. Um, and check us out at TFB, or TFB as well at uh, thefireandblog.com. Cool. And if uh, folks want to reach you on social media, which ones do you have? Yeah, man, I've got Instagram. They can hit me at, uh, at TFB Patrick on Instagram. Um, I am on Facebook as well. I think that might be Firearm Blog Patrick. Maybe? I don't okay. really know. <laughs> Try I don't, it I don't out. Really use it. <laughs> yeah. I don't use it. I just Instagram pushes stuff there automatically. And if I get a message, it, my phone beeps. Okay. So I, don't really know. I don't know. So Instagram's um, the one. Do you have Twitter or anything yeah. like that? No, man. Like I think Twitter's dying. Um, my my day job for a while was marketing, and like I paid attention to social media and how that was all working. And I just don't feel the need to spend some time on Twitter. Like I abandoned it entirely. Okay, cool. So so Instagram's the one, and he's TFB yep. Patrick on that one. Yep. yep. So yep. definitely check that out. out. Yeah, absolutely, yep. man. Thanks for coming Instagram. on. Huh? Instagram. Yes. That's that's. <laughs> Do it for the gram, bro. Do it for the gram. Yeah. Absolutely. I encourage everyone to check that out. All right, man. Thanks for coming on. I want to like thank everyone that's in the comments there. There was thank lots you, of cool wife. comments. Thank, oh. thank Lola for moderating the comments and putting up with you. Absolutely. Patrick, thanks you, Lola. So do I. So <laughs> thank you very much. I don't know if she can even hear us. She's on a delay of what she's got headsets on. So thanks for coming on. Thanks to everyone that uh, has been hanging out with us. Thanks to Walter for coming on. All the all the folks that sponsor us so that we can do this, which would be Safety Harbor Firearms, which Walter is from, uh, Rand CLP, Andrew's Custom Leather, and of course Big Daddy Guns that gives us the studio, the bandwidth, and all that kind of stuff. And we definitely can't forget the people that support us on Patreon. Uh, you guys are on Patreon. What's your Patreon? Uh, we are. It, it better be like Patreon slash TFB TV or something. Uh, you know, I <laughs> yeah, it is. It is yeah, uh, Patreon okay. slash TFB uh, yeah. TV. Uh, there you go. Yeah, we're on Patreon. You can hit us up there. Um, we also are, uh, and I want to thank our sponsors at, at TFB TV because uh, they've been pretty awesome. Um, Savage uh, Ventura Munitions, which is an amazing group of dudes as well, and then uh, Proxy Bid too. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, uh, thanks to Stag for the gun. And, of course, as we mentioned, Brownells, we will be giving this thing away. So, you know, all the folks that are looking out for that, it's coming. And tomorrow our guest is going to be none other, none other than G-Webs. That's right. Gun websites. That's going to be our guest. Um, uh, and he, he is, is he, he's doing the tour right now, isn't he? Um, maybe. I think yeah. it's on the road. Yeah, he probably is in in an unmarked van. <laughs> I think they, I, I think you're right. I want to say yeah. I saw uh, something about that not terribly long ago. I think he's calling it the Gun Show Loophole Tour. Yeah, yeah, he's up to something in a van. That's all I know. <laughs> I, I, I it, it makes me uncomfortable. I know that it, yeah, it's 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 it's, 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 it's a it's, it's not a slightly rapey van. It's a very rapey van, but it's cool. I I like it. I'm not making fun. I'm not making fun of it. It's actually pretty cool. But you know. He's, he's either like, uh, well, if he, you know what, he should paint that thing all black and then maybe people think he's, you know, like, you know, some secret organization or something like that. But yes, he is on a tour. Lola says he's on a tour and he's yeah, coming he's on, on at nine. Red Dawn tour. 
Yeah, yeah, and he's coming on at nine, just like uh, Patrick did. So um, there you go, man. I think you know that's pretty much it. It's like almost midnight. <laughs> so you know how I end my stuff. I don't know how you guys end yours, but I throw up the peace sign. I'm just gonna do a uh, see y'all later. See ya, peace. <laughs>